Yes, yes. Signaling victory as uh, uh, number two, of course. Uh, <laughs> greetings to my hard-working presidential candidate who, as at 4 a.m. today, was campaigning um, mm. as opposed to others that are asleep. Um, the, I, I greet the entire campaign team. I know today he's doing um, probably another 12 or 13 constituencies. Mm. Um, and so I urge, you know, our party supporters to fast and pray, you know, and to, 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 to believe that Monday is, 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 a, is a great day, you know. It's a great day. Okay. It's be a great day. All right. Uh, Monday will surely come. <laughs> so will Tuesday. <laughs> also with us is Martin Pebble. He's the executive director of the Human Rights and Governance Center, a uh, private legal practitioner lawyer. You're welcome to the big issue. Thank you. I have nothing to do with director simplicity. Director is fine. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for uh, uh, joining us. Later, we'll, we'll be joined by um, Richard Ahiagwa, executive director of the Dankwa Institute. Also, Franklin Kujo will be uh, with us via Zoom. And we'll, we'll set the ball rolling. We are talking about the two campaigns. Let me begin with you, Ni. Uh, you, 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 you were telling us about how your candidate, John Mahama, yes. was still campaigning yeah. uh, uh, the yeah. storm. Yes. Uh, how, how is the final leg looking? It's looking very good. Um, I must say that uh, I have been impressed. Uh, I was you know, a bit disheartened after the 2016 election. Uh, but we all have joined into the campaign this time around. And I can say without any equivocation of a doubt that uh, President Mohammed has given it his all. Um, I don't think that there's anything that we could have asked of our presidential candidate that he hasn't, um, he hasn't done. Coming on the back of 2016, where um, he suffered you know, quite a defeat, um, and the reorganization that has gone on within the party, the attraction of new uh, faces. My face, for example, was not one that you used to see much mm. uh, representing the party and all that. I think that we've, we've done a lot of restructuring, we've brought in a lot of new blood. A lot of those who have sat back um, in the past, middle class, you know, intellectuals, have all taken up the, the uh, positions. If I look at those who have volunteered mm -hmm. to be polling agents, for example, you know, it's, it, it gives me hope for the future of the party. So I think this, this, this campaign has been one that has brought out um, a lot of the otherwise dormant middle class intellectual supporters of the NDC okay. and the spirit of volunteerism, you know. And so this election campaign has, has been good. Um, he's covered the neck and breadth of the country. I think his campaign message of being able to sit back as a former president, evaluate his own performance. And I think that's perhaps, that's one of the good things that has come about as a result of having a one-term President. Yeah, some people say it's for it's good for continuity, mm -hmm. and then it helps you to finish whatever your manifesto is. But I think the good thing that has it has brought for our presidential candidate, for example, is that he has been able to look back and reflect upon his mistakes, and he has admitted it that some of the things that one of the biggest problems was he being president, he felt he was not he had people speaking for him. And they were not saying the things that, not that they were not saying the things that he would have wished them to say, but it's giving him an opportunity to talk directly to the people. Okay. It's giving him an opportunity to explain himself. So, for example, when he was president, all you could hear was, oh, he's built these um, 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 uh, infrastructure facilities. They are overinflated. There was no reason for us. We could have used that money to do other things. Now he had the opportunity to go to the every uh, 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 side of this country and interact with the electorate. Tell the electorate face to face. Well, I was touched yesterday when he stood at 37. Mm -hmm. A place, uh, the 37 DVLA um, um, uh, station where cars are registered. And he looked people directly in the face and told them that, my brother, I have never had any intention of selling this place to my brother. There's been an accusation that his brother had uh, uh, sought to take the, the land over there. He looked the electorate in the face and told them, I never did anything like that. And so the president's uh, trap is, you know, the trap is of power, the, the, the in access, your inaccessibility mm -hmm. and all that have been removed. He can walk around freely. Security is at a minimum. He can interact with the electorate. 
he can explain himself. He can listen to feedback about the things that he did which were not right and which were not correct. And he has admitted some of them. He has been able to communicate better. So being a, being a one, uh, uh, one term president first, mm -hmm. losing, feeling the, the effects of the loss, reorganizing yourself, going back to the electorate, explaining yourself, listening to the electorate. You see, that's also another opportunity when it comes to this going around. Mm -hmm. You get to listen to the electorate. That's why we had what we call the People's Manifesto, where now it's no longer about what I think necessarily may be good for Ghanaians, but what Ghanaians necessarily expect of me as, as president. So I think in the second term, mm -hmm. Inshallah, uh, uh, Wednesday by this time we would have, you know, or Tuesday even we would have got to know that he's won. He will come back as a better president. So your your party's campaign basically has been more organized and targeted yes, I think, compared I think, to 2016. Yeah, 2016. 2016, I felt there was a disconnect between the party and the government. This mm -hmm. time we are working in harmony. The party is leading the campaign. The candidate has realized that without the party he will not be able to deliver. And okay. so the party is at the center of everything uh, from the constituency level all the way to the national. You don't see any uh, rival campaign. You know, when you are in power, you have ministers. Mm -hmm. You have uh, virtually like a ministerial campaign. You know, everybody is doing whatever he wants. Now there's discipline. There's the party that leads the... the so there are some advantages to sometimes losing, I see. It helps you... Okay. Yes, it helps you to reorganize, come back to base and to build the party again. So, mm. to a large extent, this has been a good learning curve for, 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 for our presidential candidates. And I'm, All right. I believe it could only get better from, 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 from now. Uh, let me welcome Dr. Kobe Mensah, political marketing strategist and senior lecturer at the University of Ghana, the business school. Yes, you're welcome, Doc. Thank you. Thanks uh, for having me. Um, uh, Mr. Pebu, you have seen the party's campaign they've mm -hmm. spoken about a number of things what will be your evaluation of how the campaign has been conducted so far in 2020 okay i would say generally it's been well conducted generally you see so what are the indicators we would use to measure mm. okay the first is that space to have freedom of speech is number one it's number one okay like you remember that uh, famous philosopher who says i may not like what you say mm. but i would defend you to death for your right to say so yeah okay so really i've paraphrased it okay is it antoine marie or something mm. so, philosopher <laughs> so the first indicia is the that freedom of speech that political speech thing so to the extent that all the parties are for the space, they say what they like, they're able to advance their uh, uh, arguments, advocate their policies freely. Mm -hmm. That's a big plus. And you see, sometimes we take it for granted. Mm -hmm. Elsewhere, it's not so, mm -hmm. you know? So every time you hear these things going on, they're like, wow, we are making great strides. Look, let's remember this. A few years ago, I think even as of 2012, those days, even in an election year, investors were slow to come into the country. Yeah. yeah we used to have that, uh, what do you call it, um, uh, treat, mm -hmm. if you may call it, as a country. Mm -hmm. That look, election years, investors hold on with their investments. But I see this year, I mean, had it not been for the COVID, everything looked so normal. Okay. And one of the ways I see it is because there's that space for each person to do what they have to do to win the electorate, uh, the votes, okay? And then now you look at the other issue of the decency, the decorum. Mm -hmm. Yeah, compared to last year, I know Suleiman Abraham and Co, the Media Foundation, the yeah. last time, last four years, they were measuring the decorum, mm -hmm. the insults, and mm -hmm. those uh, they, they've this, been doing that this year too. Yes, mm. now in the last four weeks, I haven't heard the statistics. Mm. But I think of uh, the calf, I can say that generally this year there's been far better decorum. Mm. Okay, so that one too, we would uh, measure that uh, that's an improvement. Okay, then now uh, you would look at the uh, other in terms of the economy, the spending. Okay, the spending. It would appear to me that this time around, We've not lavished as much money as uh, 
uh, uh, we did 2016. Uh, really? 2016 was obscene. <laughs> yeah, to say the least, 2016 was obscene because you could just see that. You see, don't forget that the under the party uh, political parties act. Okay, generally they are, they have an obligation to file their accounts. Yeah, you know, they, mm. somebody had to go to court or. Just a word on that. What I'm saying is that basically the few accounts we've seen in the years, they cannot explain the kind of spending. Especially 2016 was bad. If you match it against the accounts, I didn't. Uh, this question you've asked is a doctoral <laughs> thesis. We have a doctor here. I didn't expect it like that. You see? So I'm sure otherwise I'd have brought the accounts. And maybe since he does more political yeah. marketing, maybe he has the accounts. But what I do remember is that the last time somebody went to court and they were forced to. Uh, render accounts. The figures are usually smaller, <laughs> very paltry sums. So you see this Ghanaian thing that Ghanaians are magicians. You, you, you appear to spend one billion, yeah. yet when they ask you to yeah. account, you've written 100,000 on the papers. You see, so another mark of it is that this year at least we, the, we've been modest in terms of how we've spent. Yeah, because 2016 was really obscene. It was obscene. So it's good that we are coming. Because you see, let's not forget, look, I'm not, let's say one thing very plain. This money, and that is where viewers, we all need to be very honest. Because if we don't increase the honesty in the public space, we will not get anywhere. These money you see and the rest, they come from contractors, mm. service suppliers. They are the people who donate behind the scenes. And the more you have the spending in there, then the more you're going to have corruption thrive. Because uh, after the elections, these people must recoup their money. And you see, sometimes we make a mistake. You say, I'm trained as a lawyer. The way I see life is different from the way a businessman sees life. Yeah. I'm sure from the way I speak on every time you see that I'm always crying about the public place. Let's put businessmen don't have that mentality. No, trust me. Trust me. Generally, no, 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 no. It's business. It's not about oh, let's protect the public place. He has invested. He's come to invest in your uh, this uh, political uh, campaign. Mm. So it's time for you to give him contracts to pay back. So you will pay through your nose. So the more we're able to make noise for these things to curb, mm -hmm. then the better it is for all of us. Because indirectly, then the public purse will be uh, protected. Uh -huh. Because by hook or by crook, once they spend, when you come into office, you have no option but to help them recover their investment. Uh -huh. Otherwise, your party itself will sink the next time. So you see that vicious cycle. Yeah. So I think to the extent that this year, the spending is calmed down. It's, a, it's also very, a, a very positive uh, mm. mark of our uh, democracy. Okay? okay. Yeah, I don't care if people make their money honestly and they want to spend on their politics. Yes, fine. But where we all know plainly that look, the larger bulk of this money is coming from contractors who are not for that Christmas, <laughs> but they are doing it because they have to be paid back. Mm. Then you should that's know that that's we a are problem. in trouble. Yeah, so by and large, it's, this is, I think, well, well yeah, we are doing well. We are doing, it's remarkable, remarkable. Mm. And especially at the last point is on when the, uh, the alert tip came out. That night, I was like, hey, hey, Sammy Jeffy, how is he? After he did that program, <laughs> like, hey, is he driving back home? <laughs> <laughs> you know, all of a sudden, yeah, hey. no, because, yeah, it's scary. Like, hey, we'll, 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 we'll later get to talk about the issues of corruption, yeah, which, which, which uh, uh, yeah. I'm just uh -huh. talking about the space. So okay. what, I'm, what, what marvels me is that <laughs> space, that Ghana. The freedom of speech. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's yeah. celebrate it any day, because that's how it starts. We have to talk. Mm. If people can talk, because, you see, even though Sabi and Ku, those new people and Ku will talk, but generally our population, I think not enough of us are talking. Not enough of us are talking, especially those in the middle class thinking of fearing for their jobs. But they forget mm -hmm. that if we don't speak up, if we don't speak up and the ills continue, we all will go down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So it's that thing that we should celebrate that look, people in the middle class, stand up for what you believe in. It's not always about only your job, only mm -hmm. your job. You and your wife and kids. No. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Doc, do you yeah, also I mean, feel the same way with you guys? And uh, let me say thank you for <laughs> sharing the platform with me. I'm mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, thanks, Abina, for the invitation. Uh, I, I agree largely with what uh, the submission by Martin, mm. but I think I would politely disagree a little bit okay. in some of the issues. Oh. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, the, 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 yes, we have improved, and uh, from the campaign itself that we've conducted, I think that largely you can see creativity, you okay. know. Uh, our political parties are now being creative. Mm. 
Look at the extent that people have engaged the constitutions of these parties. Mm. You know, the polls that we've run suggest that a lot more people are now engaged okay. with the discussions. You know, and I think that there's a cliche that we don't vote on issues. Mm. You know, people say we don't discuss issues, but it looks like people are connected mm. to the issues. Mm. In fact, the last uh, uh, poll that we did, uh, almost about 91 percent people could actually remember NDCs policies. Oh. Most of us, 66, could remember MPP's policy. And mm. we asked them to actually name two policies they can remember, and mm -hmm. fantastic results. Okay. So the political parties have really done well, you know, given the space that we're in. I mean, COVID, it looks like mm -hmm. it's been played out, you know, fantastically well. They've mm -hmm. been very innovative, you know. Now, my challenge is about the space for dissent and criticisms. Okay. I think that in, in the country, and that's where Martin comes in, which I agree, uh, largely there's a space, you know, people feel safe. But it also depends on which part of the space are you in. There are quite a number of people who feel squeezed. Mm -hmm. And I know for a fact that colleagues sometimes do not want to talk because of the kind of thing that you talked about. Okay. In a Your colleague thing. lecturers, you mean? Of course, I mean, mm. <laughs> no doubt about that. People mm. would want to critique, and that's what academics do. We critique, you know? Uh, I always tell some people who question me, I say, look, mm -hmm. it is not my business to mm. actually praise a government or praise mm. a political party. It's mm -hmm. for the communicators to do that. Mm -hmm. My job is for me to critique so that society benefits. Mm -hmm. So society may not be able to understand certain things, may not be able to appreciate certain things. I have to look into it. That's why the state you know, funded my education. I mean, all of us, we have one way or the other benefited from state subsidies, mm -hmm. all right? We don't pay full school fees. Yes. Whatever yes. period you've been in, in mm -hmm. Ghana, the state has actually contributed yeah. in your upbringing. Mm -hmm. So if you have the opportunity to become or to actually rise up in, the, in, uh, in, in terms of the academics, mm. to the point where you could actually see beyond what the ordinary Ghanaian should see. It is your responsibility to critique what leadership does. And, you know, perhaps prefer some corrective measures if you yeah. can. Now, that space is not free. <laughs> you know, you don't critique and go stuff free. People would just, you know, send you messages, you know, abuse you, call you names. And so I asked myself, if we have practiced democracy for 28 years, and we still cannot educate followers. And that's why I think the political parties are not being developmental enough. Part of your job is a custodian of policies, programs, et cetera. And also the development of the people, not only through policy, mm -hmm. but through education. So using your platforms to educate people what it means by multi-party democracy, what it means by discourse, what it means by disagreement, you know? And they haven't done that. In fact, to some extent, you would say that the political parties actually sponsor abuse. Okay. You know, they sponsor abuse on people like us who are supposed to be in the middle <laughs> to sort of, you know, bring both sides mm. together. Yeah. Mm. You know, so that is an issue. Why should people actually think that because of their promotion they can't talk? Mm -hmm. Why should people actually think that because of their business they can't talk? Sometimes you create a platform. You're asking a business person to come in. I remember when we used to organize. Um, programs at uh, what you call uh, British Council. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you invite bankers or mm -hmm. people within the space to come and throw more light on certain things, and they refuse. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you know? And, and this is a country mm -hmm. who has been practicing democracy for 28 years. You know, the idea that we sign a peace pact mm -hmm. actually baffles me, because mm -hmm. peace pact or peace treaties are actually symbolism of warring countries. Mm -hmm. Yet we're supposed to be a freedom, democratic country, and we're signing peace pacts. Why should you? It means that there's an anticipation of chaos after election. Why should you actually go and vote in anticipation of chaos, but not in anticipation of normalcy? So we, we probably have to think that, and I've said it, it looks like we have a false sense of, you know, uh, yes. what do you call it, tolerance. Yes. Mm. yes. A very false sense of tolerance. Yes. Because if you look at the indicators, it doesn't look like we are tolerating each other. Oh. You know? mm. so it doesn't. Yes. You know, wow. because, because people don't... And I remember collecting my, my, my thesis and my uh, data some years ago. 
2005, 2000, I spoke to one of the, my revered professors. Mm -hmm. And he says, those days, they say, what kind of bachelor? Mm. Right, and that's Rollins mm. those days. These days, we've gone, back, we've gone past what kind of bachelor. Not for ordinary people, but people within the discussing field. And we have to say it. But look, you are a typical example. You've been, you have spoken the last time, I think you took on the vice president exactly. of yeah. the QR yeah. code. Yeah. You told that yeah. that was the first time. You, should, you, your you, 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 would, you wouldn't want to know the abuse. Mm -hmm. I know, but <laughs> it's, it's a, the Ghanaians have always been like that. You wouldn't want to know the abuse. That, okay. yeah. If yeah. you read, yeah. even from the colonial times, we've yeah. always been like that. Look, mm -hmm. there could be demonstrations, find people coming out to support the governor, yeah. then people go and organize a demonstration Definitely against. Definitely, there'll be dissent in yeah. this. I agree. The threats, the threats, the threats, the threats. I agree, largely. But I mean that, it's you know, <laughs> when it's direct to you, mm -hmm. I mean, the oh, public... We receive it, but I just exactly. think that it's part exactly. of the So then the next time you're thinking, ah, uh, I don't want to say it. No, you sure. get it. So that is the space we I'm need to break about. that, is it? It will stop. The, no, 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 but but, but you see, the, 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 the issue is this. It's not just about the the, the insults. Mm -hmm. You see, if I'm a, if I'm a, a, a public not public officer, but public officers that are not supposed to engage in, in active partisan politics, mm -hmm. but for the intellectuals, mm -hmm. you know, for the university mm -hmm. uh, professors and what have you, if they cannot find space to deal with academic freedom, mm -hmm. to be able to criticize a government agent or government officials. And not do so fearing for their own lives mm -hmm. and for their own safety. You understand? Mm -hmm. Then we have a problem. We but should uh, get really, to a is, point. Is that what it is? No, is here as an mm -hmm. example. No, but yeah. he, he, he would no, tell the you. The last I knew, the COVID and the election, yeah. 100 university professors put their names to a petition. Yes. Asking the yeah. president yeah. to Medical stop. doctors, and among yeah, other yeah, things. Push. So I think some so, of the people are just too scared. So, 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 so the really, point is. We could, we could develop to the extent where. People should be able to speak their minds, you understand, without fear of some form of victimization. The victimization is sometimes seen and unseen. Mm -hmm. And those who are in the positions feel it. You know, promotions, mm -hmm. for example, renewal of contracts, mm -hmm. you know, because they deal with renewal of contracts, for example. Mm -hmm. Hoping to head a department, for example, mm -hmm. hoping to be in certain administrative positions, mm -hmm. we are politicizing everything within, 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 yeah. within, within, within. Yeah, uh, 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 this mm -hmm. Somebody will tell you that. Let me chip in. They mm -hmm. tell you that uh, democracy has to be watered from time to time. Mm -hmm. The blood of patriots and villains. That is true. Somebody yeah. must always pay a price. Yeah, of course, true. of course. And so those who would want to buy the bullet, mm -hmm. I mean, some of us. Mm -hmm. I don't really care. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. Honestly, okay. I, I, but 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 to be from, honest, from, I don't really care. Yeah, but my point is uh -huh. that. There are quite a number of significant number of people who, who would want to mm -hmm. contribute, yeah. mm -hmm. but they would because, because of these you issues. Get, you get pressures from family, you know. My but mom would tell me, "Stop speaking," no, don't you know? and then people would say, "Oh, I saw you." Then you mm -hmm. call me. You mm -hmm. have to stop speaking. Mm -hmm. Then I say, "Well, I can't stop because that's." Unfortunately for me, unfortunately for me, that's, that's my, my, my thesis, that's my, yeah. my, my discipline. So I cannot stop it because yeah. by stopping it means that I'm leaving my work. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Okay. But the point I'm making is that we could encourage. And it I should become normal. It's, it's not it should a, become normal. My colleague in New Zealand, she yes. had threatening you know, messages when the elections mm -hmm. were going on mm -hmm. there. I am not saying that it's peculiar to Ghana, but okay. I'm saying that we have improved, but we can do better. Yeah. We okay. have to go beyond. So the, and to address some core issues mm. yeah. so that people can feel freely. If you don't have a thick skin like me, I mean, you wouldn't do it, would you? Uh, so you, you, you say that uh, the surveys you conducted, mm. uh, people are more akin to the messages that the, the two uh, political parties, the main ones, are propagating. They were able to tell you some of these messages. Would you say this year's elections have been more issue-based compared so. to 2016? I think that's the best you know, elections we've had with the, the language of being issue driven. This year? Know, largely, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, from what we have monitored. In fact, uh, 2016, yes, we monitor it. We monitor it, etc. You know, but I don't think that we were so engaged with the political parties in you know, a uh, message, especially from the opposition and from the government then. You know, and that's why the NDC came out to say uh, in their findings mm -hmm. that people couldn't quite connect to MP NDC's policies at the time. Okay. You know, uh, yeah, their engagements the prior engagement. to their exactly. manifesto. Okay. Yeah. Now it looks like both sides have done very good job in making sure that people really understand what it is that they are pushing. You know. So I think that by and large, 
Yeah, they, they have done a very good job. Mm. Creatively, they have used the time, I mean, the COVID you know, experience to, to really connect mm. with the people. Um, Ni, uh, we talking about key messages, what really is the NDC going into this election with? One of the major um, um, planks of our campaign, it's the big push, you know, that's, that's, that's a, an attempt to, you know, leapfrog virtually a generational, you know, um, um, a generational um, basic um, uh, infrastructure deficit we want to cover. Mm -hmm. It's important. So the, 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 uh, the presidential candidate says, look, he has a proven track record of infrastructure development. It's undebatable. What he intends to do is to elevate that so that Ghana can catch up mm -hmm. because we seem to, to be able to to match the development giants and to be able to 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 take our pride of place in the development of Africa and for that matter in the world. Mm -hmm. If we are going to look at the traditional pace of development, we will not catch up because we have deficits that run <laughs> you know into generations. And so there's the need, almost like the Kwame Nkrumah kind of uh, uh, scenario where he took Ghana from independence with virtually zero infrastructure base and leapfrogged into the into the future. He was he was in a certain he had a certain vision that was not was even beyond the period that he was he was alive in and was thinking about two three generations ahead. That is what the big push is about. Mm -hmm. Developing our infrastructure base in all sectors. You understand? Then we are focusing on in the economy as well because we believe that the economy has serious problems. And if you look at our deficits and all that, we seem to have a problem that if we are not careful about, if we don't generate income and all, we'll have issues. So there are economic issues, there's health, you know, there's uh, education, for example, double track and all it's so it's not as if we are going to cancel the free SHS, which is which is the narrative that our opponents keep hitting us at. We are not going to do that. What President Mahama has promised is that within one year he's going to use the existing infrastructure collaborating with the private sector to eliminate the double track so that we all go in at one time and then we exit at another at, at the same time. Free uh, uh, primary health care is another uh, message that we are pushing. So when we say the People's Manifesto, you can tag, I mean, even with the armed forces, for example, we have a situation where uh, members of the security forces have improved themselves, mm -hmm. especially the police, for example. They've done their courses, but because of certain regulations within the uh, police service, they are unable to, for example, get promotions because even they have degrees, they are not able to. We are giving an honesty. We are saying that nobody cares how you uh, got your degree. What is important is that once you have it, you must be promoted. And so these are some of the major planks of our uh, uh, manifesto, which are for every single sector. I mean, the basic message is this. Between 2016 and 2020, look at your situation. Look at your life. If your life has improved from 2016 up to now, well, then the, it's the, the choice for you is very clear. You vote the MPP. If you look at your life in 2016 and you see a complete deterioration up to 2020, then the choice is obvious. So I think that it is a, it is a choice between your life in 2016 and your life in 2020. And, uh, and I think that that debate is, 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 is going to be a clear verdict on this particular government. That's one thing that I've always found interesting in 2016. Mm. President Ronaldo made a very interesting advert where he said that there must not be a situation where every any government would deem itself to have an automatic right to a second term. And that to qualify to have a second term, you must have demonstrated that the manifesto you brought to the people you have actually fulfilled that manifesto. Mm. It will be good in this country where we get to the point where no 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 um, party will take for granted that simply because you have won a first term, because we seem to have had a concerted convention that once you take a first term, automatically mm. <laughs> you're entitled to a second term. Yeah. Yes. And, and, and that, I think, technically was broken the last time. I didn't know, yes, it, was the, it would have been the second term of mm -hmm. President Mills. But... 
in some instance, everybody still saw President Mahama on the ballot box and mm. still felt that he hadn't delivered to the extent that he deserved a second term. So, anyway, we are back there again, and I think that it will be good so that parties will begin to work from day one to keep the promises that they make to the people in order to qualify for 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 a second term and so okay i think that the the, the message that we have for Ghanaians have been you know messaged throughout this uh, uh, uh period of Same campaign period. but if you don't remember anything please remember the big push please remember the cancellation of uh, uh the the double track please remember the basic health that we are promising you if you're in Abaso, can you should know that we are definitely not going to allow for the ban on uh, salvage vehicles there's something for everybody in the ndc manifesto okay. i could go on and on and on no <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah for you as a voter and the people you get to interact with on a daily basis what do you think are the main themes that will be on their minds going into the election on monday Good. So you see that this one is based on ane anecdotal evidence of my experience. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. Look, within my circles, mm -hmm. th this is how generally we see it. Both parties are basically saying the same thing. Okay? Both parties are basically saying the same thing. Remember, Mama once said something that, oh, infrastructure, anybody can build roads, those things, right? <laughs> uh -huh. So it's true to a certain extent that they are all basically saying the same thing. So rather, it's about, uh, are we tired with one? Mm -hmm. You see? That, that's the thing. Yes. So sometimes what happens is that you're like, okay, these people have been here for a short while. Like what Ni said earlier on. Mm. So look, speaking plainly generally it's just about okay it's not yet eight years maybe these people deserve a second term so that they can finish what they've started mm -hmm. then they'll go so largely from our quarters that's how it looks like okay because yeah if let's say ndc had a different candidate that's when the election would have been really exciting mm -hmm. if it was a fresh face okay uh, but because it's mama you Former know the, president yeah the baggage from 2016 has carried on so mm -hmm. it's quite uh, difficult so you hear people that's why you said anecdote i yeah. haven't done it okay. yeah, 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 yeah so yeah, my friends and everything the larger thing is that oh yeah these guys have just been here for four years mm -hmm. maybe let the normal eight year mm -hmm. run its course mm -hmm. that's what i hear the doc ha have the messages the mm -hmm. let's begin with the ndc they talk about the big push mm -hmm. which encompasses everything the okada is in there among other things you talk about the free primary health care abolishing the double track system do you see these messages as targeted enough mm. for the ordinary Ghanaian yeah I think the, the political parties have been very sophisticated these days I mean uh, it started off uh, in uh, Jacob Echevillante's time when he managed in you know, a former president Kufour's campaign now fantastic <laughs> you know kind of approach mm -hmm. in of targeting you know policies in fact that was the first time we saw uh, policy branding yeah. uh, you know, uh, coming up and that's actually what inspired my PhD mm, yeah. okay. and then of course uh, let me say that my godfather you know Professor Bafa Jimindia said Kobe you have to do this PhD on this mm. particular topic I'm grateful to him for that you know so over the years we've seen political parties being able to package policies and target it so I think that it is you know something that it's worth doing mm. and they've actually reaped success out of it so just as you're saying, I mean, the kind of policy positions that the NDC, uh, as you mentioned, mm -hmm. had actually you know, put together, you could see immediately the kind of people they want to speak to. Okay. For example, you know, you, they talk about you know, the, the maternity leave. Mm. Obviously, you know who yeah. they're talking to. They talk about you know, uh, what you call the free primary health care. Obviously, you know who they're talking to. You know, they talk about the big push, which Ni actually explained. So for me, I think that the political parties have been very, very, you know, uh, good at that. I mean, NPP did the same in 2016. Now they had, you know, 1D1F, all these, you mm -hmm. know, targeted, you know, policies. Mm. What I find, you know, quite interesting, though, is that the political parties interchange positions depending on where they are. You know, yesterday I just put out some, a tweet and I said, you know, uh, branded as a house of brand. You know, in 2016, and I will be very plain, NPP came out very creative, you know, with this 1D1F and mm -hmm. policies that mm -hmm. were well branded and articulated, mm -hmm. got people very connected to the campaign, they won. 
Now, NDC couldn't actually put out the message clearly, and it was all about infrastructure. Well, yeah. So after the election, people said, mm. we can't remember what NDC said. Mm. All right. Now, guess what? The flip side is happen happening. Well, if you look at the N MPP's policies uh, manifesto, it's very historic. I mean, very, very what they did and what they're continuing to do. Of course, they would argue that it's a continuity agenda. Accounting. And so, you know, the, but you see, the society is not static. It's very dynamic. Mm -hmm. Even when you have provided free SHS, people want to look beyond that. Really? Yeah, yeah. of course. Mm -hmm. I mean, <laughs> you wouldn't say yeah. that after mm -hmm. free SHS, yeah. that's your end. That's okay. So I questioned and I said, okay, you were so creative, innovative in 2016. What happened in 2020 elections? The campaign, uh, the manifesto was so verbose, so texty. Mm -hmm. You couldn't even, and I'm sure you guys have done analysis of the two manifestos. Mm -hmm. And you could see a clear blue sea you know, between the NDC and the NPP. It, isn't it uh, the same fate perhaps the NDC suffered whilst they were in government? That's the point I'm then making. You, then you market a continuity agenda. That's the point I'm making. But the continuity agenda doesn't mean that you fail to be innovative. You, you know, fail to be, you know, futuristic. The, the, the key, the, the, the interesting criticism, one of the criticisms is that um, when we did the, when we did the, uh, uh, not a survey, but, you know, an in-house um, discussion mm. um it was that you see you must as a government be in tune with what the people want you cannot for example take for granted because that's the danger mm. that once you are in power you believe that because you had a certain manifesto mm. you necessarily must complete the manifesto and if you don't complete the manifesto in your first term that is the same needs of the people moving forward mm. so there's that there's that always that um possibility and that um, mistake that incumbents do mm -hmm. that look I have a certain vision I wanted to finish for example I want to finish 300 uh, senior secondary schools mm -hmm. so by hook or crook yeah, that's, that is necessarily what the people or, or the people want in my second term but maybe within the four years there have been we new challenges course. there have been new needs so okay. one of the things we suffered from was when one 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 public one public servant was well, who told you that necessarily Ghanaians were looking for three hundred or two hundred uh, mm. senior secondary uh, schools? You could have made us a, you could have made, you could have promised us to do something, but when you tag two hundred mm. senior secondary schools, it means that if you don't fulfill those two hundred mm. senior secondary schools, you failed, mm. and we may judge you unfortunately mm. based on that two hundred number that you put down so next time don't put a number down tell us you would build secondary schools but you tag a certain number we expect you to finish those 200 mm. and we will not give you the opportunity to tell us that you are now going to re-promise us another uh, to give you time to finish that 200 because at that point where you were at the 200 we have new needs that mm. we we yeah. we we, so, we, yeah, we no. want to yeah. to, so, to, so, to, so the point, to complete like like uh, Ni is saying you know the incumbency actually box you up yeah mm -hmm. you know and you become so tidy that you forget that there must be some kind of renewal you know and that's why marriages have uh, what do you call <laughs> anniversaries you know? so, so I ask myself what happens to these politicians yeah. you know you've got to you get actually think mm -hmm. that you know, we cannot stay with the same manifested that you have. So so what you you you, you, you abandon that power you don't abandon it. Uh -huh. But you have to bring in new ideas in connection to you know your, that, you know in marketing. Like a product could be in the market for a long time. Rebranded. But you realize that it's it's too tardy. People mm -hmm. so you've got to do something about it. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to bring a renewal. Mm -hmm. So you could have your free SHS all right, mm -hmm. but then pump in some new blood. Yeah. You know, in order that it can become much more suitable for twenty twenty elections. So let me give you an example you know? for example. Mm -hmm. So, so let, for let me, me give, let, that's just an example. So for example, NDC proposed the free SHS sorry, the e blocks. Mm -hmm. Those e blocks were mainly for day um, the students. Uh, students. Mm. We got back into our manifesto, people's manifesto, and the feedback we get is that there are places where they were isolated from the center of town, for example. Mm. So we need to add boarding mm. facilities to it. So one of the key differences now is that beyond the e-blocks, mm. we're going to add boarding facilities to those e-blocks, mm -hmm. especially for those that are sited outside town. 
So you, if you don't go back to the people to get the feedback, you understand? You will believe that because you are simply citing 200 e-blocks, that is enough. But the criticism is that you cited it without necessarily taking into account the fact that some of them were outside the, the town. Uh -huh. So it is always important as a government to engage. Because if you don't engage, incumbency, look, one of the biggest problems is when you are president. You would be told what you want to hear. Mm -hmm. Oh, everything is fine. Everything is ongoing. <laughs> everything mm -hmm. is excellent. But it is when you are in opposition mm -hmm. and there are no longer persons who need to tell you what you want to hear mm -hmm. that you actually get feedback that is very unpleasant, mm -hmm. but that is actually good for you. <laughs> so now, now I can pick up the phone and tell President Mahama what I think. Mm -hmm. But if he is president, imagine the number of protocols you go through before you get to him. So that is some of the things I think when you are in government and you are kicked out in the first term, is good because it revitalizes your your campaign. It, it does so many things yeah. for you, actually. Yeah. Let me ask this. Yeah. It's one, uh, yeah, so that because Doc does yeah. the yeah, policy yeah. Camp, uh, yeah. Yeah. You see, the way I see it, it's going be the case that usually, look, mm. each party has a certain base, maybe give or take 45%. 40 yeah, 40 and then yeah. there are those of us in the middle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So those of us in the yeah. middle, it's not about the yeah. SHS. Yeah. Or, yeah. No, no, we don't vote based on yeah, SHS. Matter, those think, of us in the middle, it's quite a complex mix. But some of the things are, look, listen, what are you doing on corruption? Mm -hmm. One. And yeah. then even most important, and I've seen that in terms of corruption, both have the same problem. <laughs> <laughs> then, <laughs> So the key thing, <laughs> thing, the key thing is that uh, then it becomes the, the key thing becomes okay. This one is at eight. Give mm. the other one eight. So okay. the money you've stolen, go and spend, finish spending it before you come. <laughs> That's the way we go. It's not about free SHS yeah. or mm -hmm. free healthcare. Mm. No, 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 no. It's that you came for eight years. Mm. The perks of the office you've amassed so much wealth. Please stay out for <laughs> some that, years. Let it dwindle before you come back. Let and it be so, very so the, clear. The, 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 the messages the the traditional messages the one oh, digit one no, 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 those no, no, are targeted no. at the base yeah. you think yeah. no, 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 the base are constant See, they, they, no matter what their vote is on autopilot mm -hmm. their yeah, votes but, but are even, on auto, even that autopilot one, even that one martin evidence suggests that it is no longer the case that the political party have a staple 40 percent they can't get 40 no, stable. 30, 30. It, there's 30. a movement yeah. you know, in fact mm -hmm. in 2014 we did a study and asked people mm -hmm. on measures mm -hmm. How rich people will vote, how mm -hmm. poor people mm -hmm. vote, how market people vote, how mm -hmm. fishermen will vote. Mm -hmm. And you could see that there is a percentage in changes. Okay. You know? So those days we think rich people vote, MPP, poor people mm -hmm. vote. It's no longer that. But uh, I mean, I that's think it's talking more about the base. Is it 40? Is it 45%? Yeah. 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 So what is uh -huh. happening? There's Let's quite a lot of movement within the political parties. But where would you put the percentages? So you, So for me, and that's why we've been having these, you know, kind of a, a, a very, um, a, how do I put it? We, we, we have a word for it. It's escaping, but I'll come to it. Okay. So we, we probably could say that about 30%. Mm. And the, the problem is that mm. the political parties themselves do not have membership you know, uh, roast this. Like, they don't have... We do now. Yeah. Now, now, very, very now, now, now I can tell you it's... Oh, it's, it's not it's, comprehensive. No, like, it is. No, you see, that because of technology, because of uh, WhatsApp yeah. and mm. roasts, I can mm. tell you that, in, if, for example, on my phone, I can tell you, I can give you across the country. Mm -hmm. where, the yeah, because it used not to be like that. But technology, I can tell you, has improved because those are the databases we use for internal pools, mm -hmm. especially electing the primaries and getting our, and that's our, a good our thing. people that's for, a good for, thing. So but it's better I, I now. Think that because especially of WhatsApp and those yeah, other platforms. I, I think that a good measure would be mm -hmm. the political party opening up the primary space mm -hmm. for universal suffrage. Right? Okay. So that instead of having a delegate uh, college, mm -hmm. uh, electoral college mm -hmm. kind of system, open up let it's people and this let, 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 let me give you the practical. Let me give the practical. You know what happens? For example, in, in the in areas or in regions where you have, let's say for ourselves, for Ashanti region, mm -hmm. practically, mm. the MPP can basically sponsor who your candidates will be. But that's, that's why you need mechanisms. No, I mean, it is it is impossible. No, 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 no. Let me no. Let me tell you. No, no. I'm telling you the practical thing. That look. If you were to open up <laughs> your adult universal adult suffrage, okay. what will happen is that if, for example, you are in opposition and your 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 opponent was in was in government 
What they simply do is to sponsor uh, 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 <laughs> delegates across the board. What they do do is to compromise your candidates mm -hmm. in such a way that they will not even turn up. <laughs> you understand? But, I'm but telling but you, sure, they will not even turn up. We suffered it. So I'm yeah, telling you, I'm sure that this that is one of the issues that you can resolve. I mean, that's why I always it's have when you issue. close it, When you close it, what mm -hmm. happens is that it is the core, you know, because we know our members in the various areas. For example, we have branch, uh, uh, MPP has a polling station system. Mm -hmm. We have the branch system. Mm -hmm. So at the branch level, mm -hmm. in a neighborhood, I know, for example, in my area, who and who and who are MDC members. Mm -hmm. When you open it to say that, oh, anybody at all in the area who professes to be, because you have to no, attend no, meetings. No, no. I mean, I mean mm -hmm. the NDC members, okay, okay, as opposed to the Electoral College, mm -hmm. the NDC members yes. having the opportunity you let him make to, okay. yeah, mm -hmm. have an opportunity to vote. The reason I'm saying that is that, mm -hmm. then you increase ownership, all right? People then feel that they're indeed very, very part of the process. Mm -hmm. You increase opportunity for fundraising, mm -hmm. because then you could actually identify people and say, hey, you've got to pay your dues, all right? Currently, as it is, if you have only the electoral college as we have it, mm -hmm. you know, people do not even think that the president we're electing are actually coming from us because obviously very few people. So, so let me hear the practical. Who are actually doing it. Uh -huh. so I think okay. that uh -huh. the, uh, barring, I mean, we have problems, of course, I, I know, but we can still, you know, uh, look at it, the problems, and then find systems that we could actually use to ward off the problems. I mean, the same argument was uh, for free SHS. And some of us have actually articulated that. Having started phase, you should start another phase of where you can actually start building databases that you can identify somebody like me who can actually pay for seven people mm -hmm. out of the system so that you can actually create a fiscal space to do other things. But if we do not start because we say there's no database, it is difficult to do, when can we start making sure that we can make progress in certain things? So let me give you a reaction at a practical, as opposed to that theoretical level of what you're saying. Party, party, uh, party politics or uh, uh, local party um, activity is based on a certain system of activism and track record and loyalty. Mm -hmm. So I must know for, for, for maybe a period of time, let's mm -hmm. say three, four years, that you have been an active member of that particular police station or that particular branch because it's about loyalty you know if you open it up this year for example and say that anybody at all who wants to be an ndc who wants to be a, who is, wants to be an ndc member can necessarily vote in your internal no, that's not okay so 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 that's one of the prescriptions okay all right? so that's one of the so, things okay, that you yeah, so after four years then you so, can but we put in so those but, so when we normally put in those crosses mm -hmm. that is the only way you are able to sieve out those persons who are opportunists or who may be sponsored by your I opponents. Yeah. Okay. So, so that's the thing. So we have to put up. So you cannot like give that. the same rights mm. to everyone who, for example, you cannot give somebody who is just joined today the same right no, as no, somebody I, who has been a member for almost no, six no, seven years. So you put yeah. the mechanisms and said for you to be able to vote. Then you have to be a member. That is why we've closed it now. Yeah, but you still have it as the delegates. That's what I mean. Yeah, no, we, we did it. We did it. I think we suffered. 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 We had been very, very high okay. than the NPP. It's a people's manifesto. Just because of... Yeah, just because of the, That's what I'm saying. You know, in 2016, and these NPPs was very high. Mm -hmm. Obviously, they got into government. They become tardy. And then, you know, the, the flip side is, is the case. So I think that the political party should try as much as possible to get people behind the scenes. I don't know how they come about it, but mm. you see, it looks like when they go in government, everybody is in government. But how have they <laughs> fared in marketing, mm. say, what they will call their achievements mm -hmm. of yeah, the 2016 they, they, manifesto? They, you know, the political party has been using the policy fairs, etc. Unfortunately, what happens is that sometimes they appeal to their own people, you know, uh, I, I, I attended in the vice president's speech, okay. and that's why that tweet came. Mm -hmm. And I was surprised. University campus, and you have mm -hmm. these young people in MPP t-shirt and then being brought there. Almost more than half of them were there. I mean, what's the point? Do you get it? So they should stop 
you know, deceiving themselves with this idea of it has to be seen as being failed mm -hmm. and then using their own people to speak to. All right? mm -hmm. So the policy fails, sometimes they invite their own people to get there. And then the people that actually matter, to, mm -hmm. that must know, are actually not there. Mm -hmm. Because the political parties are not using the ways that, I mean, creative ways and not appealing to people enough to get to know, you know uh, what they have for them. So they've got to actually work on that. So yes, I said that uh, by and large, I mean, very largely they have done well in marketing. Mm -hmm. But it looks like the NDC had been much more, you know, uh, uh, what do you call, on the higher side in terms of, you know, how people can recall their policies, you know, than the NDC, MPP. Why? Because as I said, it looks like there's a swapping of places, you know, from uh, 2016 to 2020. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Uh, you're still watching or listening to The Big Issue on 97.3 City FM and City TV. Our WhatsApp number is 0549 My name is Apnanya Mechampedu. I'm here with Nick Papu Samwa Ado, Dr. Kobi Mensah, and Martin Pebu, a private legal practitioner. Uh, we'll take a breather here. When we return, we have more and we'll delve into those issues. Don't go away. Representing a country is no small feat. Because in Ghana, the love for Israel is so real, is so real. People are nursing it from home, from churches, and then you are walking in such a positive atmosphere and all the doors are open for you. View the lives of the diplomats in Ghana through their very own eyes and see how they make Ghana their home. I always loved it. I, I love the, the remains of African culture in Brazil. I am very interested in the, the way Africans were able to, in amidst those horrible conditions, they were capable of transform their African heritage. Join me, Apioko Sarah Mashong Abe, on Diplomatic License every Saturday at 5 p.m. only on City TV. Telling Ghana's business story. City TV brings you a dedicated business news bulletin that showcases the business temperature of the country in one go. The business dashboard, the markets, industry, and policies that affect the way we do business. All covered in one bulletin. The business dashboard, 7 p.m. every weeknight on City TV. back to the big issue on City FM and City TV. This is the Election Bureau. Uh, we are counting down to Election Day on Monday, and you know City FM and City TV is where you should stay uh, after voting. We we'll give you all the information you need to know. Uh, we are continuing our discussion, and we will now talk about the issue of corruption. This week, it came up. It was one press conference after the other between the two main parties. Now, the New Patriotic Party says it will be detrimental to Ghana's growth if John Mahama is voted into power as president. The party says the NDC flag bearer may soon become a fugitive 
of the United States, United Kingdom and France after allegedly being fingered in the Airbus scandal. In February, investigations by the U.S. Serious Fraud Office identified airplane manufacturer Airbus as bribing government officials in the sale of aircraft to several countries, including Ghana. And uh, take a look at this or listen in if you're on radio. John Mahama could soon face the international criminal justice system. This is the man who is on your ballot paper, and you, as a Ghanaian voter, will be handed that paper on Monday to choose your president for the next four years. You risk choosing a president who would be a fugitive in France the United Kingdom, and the United States of America. Prosecutors in all three countries, in striking a deal with Airbus for the fines, made it clear that it would not stop them from pursuing the individuals involved. This means that candidate Mahama risks arrest if he steps anywhere near those shores. Can you imagine a president of the Republic of Ghana who has an international arrest warrant on his head, who would not be able to travel freely abroad to fight and negotiate for Ghana? That, ladies and gentlemen, is the risk. Right, and so the NDC has challenged the MPP hierarchy to publish evidence in the Airbus reports that incriminates any government official. Uh, don't forget the party also, in the beginning of the week, accused President Ekufado of being corrupt after what they say uh, is indisputable evidence in a viral video which uh, President Ekufado is captured allegedly taking some money uh, aimed at influence in his office. I am throwing a challenge to Kojo Ponkroma and Mustafa Hamid. Let me add Nana Komia as well and maybe Kwekubako, and the MPP, that by close of day to day, if they want Ghanaians to take them seriously, they should just show, Kwekubako Kwe Kwe can tweet it, show us one phrase, one sentence, in the whole Airbus deferred prosecution agreement or approved judgment, in which it is said that a Ghana government official at the time the transaction took place, was paid any money or committed any offense. And I, Sami Jenfi, I will resign as communication officer of the NDC. Just show me one phrase or one sentence. I am daring you, if you are factual, if you know what you're talking about and you're not just throwing dust into the eyes of Ghanaians, we are daring you, show us. There is nothing. When you went for their press conference, they gave you nothing but conjectures conspiracy theories and falsehood. The reports are available, show us which part of the report says that a Ghana government official was paid bribe in the acquisition of the aircraft. The whole Airbus matter is about agents of Airbus who were paid agency fees by Airbus. Mm -hmm. Government of Ghana did not recruit any agents in that transaction, and government of Ghana did not pay any agency fee. And no government official was paid anything. It is not in, in there. If they are saying it is in there, Kodio Ponkroma tweets the relevant paragraph or sentence or page. Mustafa Hamid tweets it. And let's know that you are speaking the truth. Ladies and gentlemen, this matter came months ago, like I said. Do you think? Look at how President Kufuadu hates John Muhammad with a passion. Look at the way the MPP hates John Muhammad. They are number one opponents. If they had evidence that they are taking bribe, will he be contesting this election? Would they, would they have reduced it to, a, to press conferences? Were they elected to talk? Governments don't talk, they act. If you have evidence that John Muhammad has done anything wrong in the air basket, the man has dared you. He has dared you. That bring it out. Investigate me. Can President Akufuado dare Martin Amidu today? Can he dare him? <laughs> when you warned him that if you joke, I will reveal more of your stinking corrupt acts. Silence. Since that time till now. 
But President Mahama dead Martin Amidu. And he dead governments until they did not done anything for. Because there is nothing in there. It is empty. They are just looking for a bribery classmate for their president, President Ekufuado. But they cannot have one in John Mahama. Because John Mahama is incorruptible. His integrity is unassailable. He's been deputy minister, minister, MP for three terms, vice president, and president. Not a scintilla of evidence has ever been produced by anybody that shows that he has ever committed a crime or stolen any money in any of the public offices he has said. All right, so you heard that the NDC's uh, communications officer, uh, Sami Jemfi. Earlier you heard uh, Dr. Mustafa Hamid, deputy campaign manager for the MPP. Let me begin with you, uh, lawyer Kwebu. Earlier you made a statement that <laughs> the NDC and the MPP, when it comes to corruption, <laughs> They are all, all yeah, the yeah, same. Now, now, look, yes, that's it. You see, we force and that's as a distance that we have to be plain. I don't like this political co uh, co correctness. Okay. You see, it's because the Ghanaian is largely corrupt. You see, <laughs> their political party is a reflection of us. Yeah. They are the same people. So you see why people like us usually we say, okay, eight years, then we change the government eight years. That's it. That's why I said, you, I like now. the way you ask me that in my circles, what's the anecdotal evidence? Mm. Yes, because when you want to use corruption, then we are going to boot both parties out and ask for a fresh party. Mm. Mm. But if you were able to do that, you see that the Ghanaian is largely corrupt. Because it's, they are a macrocosm of the larger population. You will still see people in this day and age trying to, you know, preparing to enter so that they can also go and chop. It is, it is the, that's the way we talk loosely off the camera. There's a you see. Call, it's our time to chop. Exactly, it's our time to chop. That's the subculture that we have. You <laughs> see, so that's why I said this election, we, we've all seen now, we've all grown, I mean, wise and that is the same people. So we need to do a paradigm shift in the way we hold them to account. You see, yes, that's what's going to make the difference. But as for corruption as the main indicia, then we'll boot out both parties. Mm -hmm. Yes, certainly. Uh, I'm sure you've seen the yeah. accusations and the counter accusations. Excellent. Uh, do they have any role to play in the CS elections at all? The final week, and we had all these issues coming up. Yes, yeah, so that is, oh, definitely some people may want to vote based upon it. Yes, you know, because the population is very diverse. You know, in any given population, you'll find some people hinging their final vote on corruption. Maybe it's Doc who can tell what percentage. But I see that in recent times, when the polls come out, they no longer use corruption as the number one in this year for determining yeah. who to vote for. That's an acceptance that we are largely corrupt as a society. Mm. That's why I said the political party is a macrocosm of us as a larger mm. this grouping of a society. So we need to keep talking, need to keep talking so that we increase our ethics. Mm. Yes, that's it. Otherwise, look, we are doomed. Doc, what have your yeah. survey pointed to when it comes to corruption mm -hmm. before? Yeah, uh, I mean, from what Martin said, it's true. I mean, one of my, I mean, my, my dean, for example, in one of his papers, uh, they did a study you know, among students, uh, I mean generally in the country, to find out what they're thinking about corruption. And in fact, it shows that even among students, when they get an opportunity, they will be corrupt. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So the society is such that they, I, I, was, I was surprised when I went to a, a village and with this issue of family and friends thing, mm -hmm. you know, a driver was actually defending that even on Nuka and Kobe, I was uh -huh. so surprised. Exactly, that, that is it, that yes. The society is that, mm -hmm. you know, in that state. Uh, but of course, the, the, I, I think that in, a, in the polls, uh, a lot of times people link corruption to good governance. So you realize that people's choices, you know, good governance is one of them. Okay. And the reason why it's crucial in this election is because it was crucial in 2016. Yeah. And I've made the argument that the, one of the professor, uh, I said, uh, uh, President you know, Akufado's core brand values was incorruptibility. Mm -hmm. you know, and that was the differentiation. You know? So there was a coalition of voters who actually aggregated around that particular mm -hmm. You Remember the mm -hmm. Occupy Flagstaff House mm -hmm. you know, demonstration? Mm -hmm. So in most cases, the very core of those who pretend they've joined them in government. Exactly. So you see that so, it wasn't so really in, neutral. In most, they were in not neutral. <laughs> the middle class tend to aggregate around that particular policy positions mm -hmm. on corruption, which means that if 
that class or that coalition of voters had actually voted with the expectation that you could actually work on that and you fail, then suddenly you bear the consequences. So for me, I think that, yes, within the middle class, the corruption issue would be very, very crucial mm -hmm. as one of their decision making. Mm -hmm. you know? And that is actually couched within the frame of good governance, for example. So some of the top issues on voters' minds from the polls that we collect mm -hmm. uh, were conducted. Obviously, jobs. You know? mm -hmm. And usually, jobs and economy is sort of uh, interlaced. You know? And then, of course, you have corruption as part of the good governance mm -hmm. uh, issues. And then, of course, education policy and mm -hmm. health, etc. So I think that it's it's one of the crucial, you know, electoral issues, you know, going into election 2020 because it was one of the cardinal issues in 2016. So certainly, it's going to actually roll on into 2020. Election. You spoke about how in 2016, with the uh, the corruption conversation and. Uh, can then candidate Akufuado being seen as incorruptible, mm -hmm. being the differentiator. Has that changed this year? I, I think that it's changed dramatically. The reason being that, you know, the, in fact, candidate Akufuado's brand itself mm -hmm. sits on two things. One, incorruptibility, two, advocacy. Mm -hmm. right. Now, in my view, <laughs> I, I dare to say because obviously I know what people will say, to some extent, you know, he has actually affected those two brand values in a negatively, because of the actions and inactions. Because obviously, you want to be seen as acting to your brand values, all right? He failed it. So once he fails, he, he failed it. Then of course, you know that you're not going to go into the 2016 and 2020 elections with the same brand values. And that's why you see the conversation has changed, you know, from the MPP's you know, uh, conversation. MPP no longer talk about corruption, you know as part of the campaign message. They've actually seeded the area of economy into free SHS, which is very social justice and social policy. Mm -hmm. All right. If you look at 2016 MPP conversation, it was very much economy and corruption. Mm -hmm. Why is it that they are touting more free SHS? Because they have actually seeded that particular mm -hmm. space. You know? So you realize that, yes, going into 2020, the Policy platforms or the brand, you know, a value that is stood on, they realized that it would be very difficult for them to push the same, you know, because the brand hadn't actually fulfilled with that. So they move into a different space, which is the free SHS, which is much more accommodating for them because they feel buoyant, they feel they've actually performed. This. Okay, let me cross over to Zoom and engage Franklin Kujo, president of Imani Africa. Good morning to you, Franklin. Good morning. Okay, good to have you join us. We, we are talking about corruption now and how it seemed to have come up within the final week into the election. What impact do you think it will have on the minds of voters going into Monday? Well, that's a very tricky one. Uh, again, sadly, corruption seems to be probably the third or fourth issue, which is, uh, of course, the reason is uh, clearly the significant part of the media are not interested in pushing the idea that corruption was, the battle against corruption was lost three years ago. Uh, and so what it means is that all the things we are seeing now is like in Kosovo, how do you guys say that? Uh, Dara, you know, like, um, you've got a lot of things and now that uh, they are giving you some so addition, just, just so that you're a good customer. Part of the matter is that uh, maybe there's corruption fatigue, because clearly speaking, I have been on record to suggest that our good friend, the president, is too weak to fight corruption. Um, so the things going for him are the very things that uh, people like to connect. I mean, free SHS is a big game changer. Um, the coronavirus alleviation uh, freebies as well was quite significant. Uh, somehow the marketing spin of the MPP works much better than that of the opposition. And don't forget, the opposition probably got to this stage simply because of the relationship, rather good or bad, that they didn't really have with the media while in power. But to be fair, I think that the things we said of Mahama, including myself, the kinds of movements we created and formed, including those of the OG, 
which uh, I was part of. Um, and the things we said, the things we hear in our pills and insignificance, really. And uh, um, a part of me feels sorry that uh, we did all of that to the ex-president. But now we seem to be cozy about this particular issue. I've, I've been worried, seriously, that uh, uh, a part of me feels that President Kufuadu left his, some of his appointees who from day one, remember the boss sat at him, there was no report. And uh, if I tell you the person who told me there was no report, so I should start wasting my time, you'll be alarmed. So there's been no report. There's been half-hearted measures of fighting corruption. The good thing is that the NPP knows how to sell their story. And uh, you can't begrudge them anyway. They, they know how to sell their campaigns and their flagship projects that, that have resonated with quite a lot of people. Mm. So maybe that's the reason. Uh, but there's a certain sense of hypocrisy from some of the some of my colleagues who obviously were more active in pressure groups, uh, keeping quiet and not saying a thing. Um, I've rendered my apology to God uh, because I think that it's unfortunate. But hey, listen, there's an election, and uh, it behoves the opposition to also make. Uh, a lot of noise about what it feel or see is corruption. Uh, as I said, we lost the fight three years ago, and you don't have to listen to Franklin Pidu. I mean, the indices clearly show. Mama's best, worst record is uh, my good friend of Fado's uh, best record. Hmm. And that doesn't speak well at all. Uh, okay. So, yeah. All right. Um, we've been joined in studio by Rachel Ahiagwa, Executive Director of Dankwa Institute, also quite late to the party. Yeah, I'm not sure <laughs> if I got a time wrong, but I was, okay. I was thinking I'd be okay. here at 10 o'clock. Okay, uh, okay. I wasn't told to be here uh, earlier than that. Okay, that's yeah. that's that's fine. Yeah. Uh, y we are talking about corruption now. Uh, that you understanding uh, from Franklin's submission and a couple of my guests in studio is that even for now, the MPP seem to be shying away from the corruption conversation because that incorruptible tag on the president has waned. Is that what it is? Uh, well, thank you very much, and uh, good morning to my co-panelists and uh, your viewers. Mm. I clearly I disagree with that position. I heard my uh, senior talk about it, and I was wondering who he was describing. Uh, because just yesterday, uh, the MPP... Uh, had a press conference led by the deputy campaign manager responsible for co uh, communication, mm. the Dr. Abdul uh, Mustafa Hamid. And he was talking about how is it that government is pursuing uh, recovery or retrieval of some uh, funds uh, coming out from the Airbus uh, uh, ruling. <laughs> um, and that the, the, the retrieval of that amount mm -hmm. uh, is intended to be applied to strengthening uh, our anti-corruption institutions to ensure that we are a bit more sharpened uh, in terms of fighting corruption. So I'm not sure if the, the conversation, he missed it, or uh, the idea that uh, uh, he probably didn't think that was uh, fighting corruption or not. But uh, uh, the, the attempt you have seen lately, uh, which by and large is the NDC's MO, to try and pin corruption on Akufado. Mm -hmm. For the four years that he's been in government, that has been the, the motive, but they have not quite succeeded. But the thing about it is that you can have any number of co uh, conversation in election year, but you look and gauge the public sentiment and where the conversation is. And that's where you focus on. You, you can okay. decide to talk about anything if you're a political party, but then you may not be resonating with people. Mm -hmm. The question today is, what is the most concern of people today? It is not corruption in a sense of the word. People want to move the Ghana, uh, the Ghana story forward. They want to have a situation where, with COVID, where do we go from here? Okay. Uh, I don't know if you, uh, my senior mentioned about we see that uh, economy also. I'm not sure. But if you are talking about free SHS, mm -hmm. the only reason you can advance free SHS is that you are able to build the economy to provide the funding to administer that policy. So inherently, when you're talking about free SHS, you're talking about one district, one factory. You're talking about a future 
of infrastructure, building 111 uh, hospitals, then you are talking inherently about having an economy that can deliver that, which was the, the opposite when the NDC was in government. They could manage the economy in ways that they can have the, the room to be able to do that. So we're talking about everything in terms of building the economy and the conversation in terms of corruption is driven by what the people are focused on. In 2016, okay. when corruption was front and center of the discussion, you realize the issue that was bugging the country that was corruption. People were up in arms about how is it that a government at the time was perceived to be so corrupt. And the issues uh, are replete. You can talk from the bus branding to the SADA situations to the Wyoming cases. Those were the present conversations, right? So the public conversation was driving that. It wasn't the MPP that said, let's talk about corruption. We want to let Ghanaians connect with the future we want to provide. So it was the environment that provided the impetus for that discussion. Today, if the environment called for it, that conversation will be had. Okay. You see that when the NDC brought that video, mm -hmm. that clearly false and unconscionable faking of a video, when they brought it, you saw how the outcome was. It fell flat because the country is not in the mood to discuss if it were a genuine corruption case. Perhaps it would have taken a life on its own, right? But because it wasn't, and they are seeking to force the issue, the country is not in the mood for that. So you, as a political party, and I think I probably will agree slightly with, uh, with, uh, Franklin. with Franklin in the conversation, except to say uh, that it is not that we are skilled in any particular way in selling our message, but our message seems to be flowing naturally from what we are doing, that it is, it is, there's, a con there, there's a consistent and conscious effort by the NPP to try to do right and sometimes when you're trying to do right, the, the, the forces of nature actually lend their support to your cause, which, in my view, seems to be to Franklin that we're skilled in a particular way of telling our story. Mm. The point is that we try our honest best, okay, to do what it is we believe honestly is right to do for this country. And so if we're doing that and the forces of nature lend its support and our story comes out naturally as credible and believable, then that's what it is. So you can force and probably set a political agenda. Let's talk about corruption. But if the country is not in that place, that conversation would not sustain. Okay. And that's what is determining this year's election and the campaign. You see, people are looking for a future beyond conversation, right? And you have a government that comes in in 2016 when this country was in a quagmire. And then certainly there is hope that our kids can go to school for free to the extent that the person who opposed it now says he proposed it. So that's certainly a good thing, right? And so it is that hope that is driving the campaign. And that is why people want to talk about tomorrow rather than belabor the point of yesterday. And we are believing that if, so you tell me, for example, right? We have a situation in 2016 that is sound as if, or everything looks as if, well, we couldn't pay teacher training allowance because we didn't have the money, right? But somehow, today you found the money, you are doing that. Not only doing that, but doing more, right? And then you, people say, oh, we don't have the money if we have two billion, we won't spend on free SHS. But somehow, somebody found the money and then is able to do free SHS to the extent that we are even carrying that to the university level. Now, people are trying to see that Okay, well, the conversation yesterday, which was focused on the small things, really we need to focus on the big thing. That's where the conversation is. So you see the NDC is all about mimicking efforts that is being made. We are going to do this, we are going to do that. That is the future we must give Ghanaians. Corruption, if it comes up, should be talked about and litigated clearly. We must fight corruption. And the government and the president is committed to doing that. But we just don't have co corruption conversation because it sounds good and it's political. So you say, let's have it. No, it must be determined by the mood of the country. And that's how it flows. So okay. I agree. If they want to talk about it, they can't, which is what they started, the NDC started. Mm -hmm. But then because it is wrong and it is false, I hope we'll talk about their video, right? Because it is wrong, because that's very unconscionable behavior. Mm -hmm. And we need to call it out. And I'm waiting before we, we close that people can describe it clearly. 
as a vicious behavior that should not be accepted as part of a political exercise. <laughs> so I am saying that the discussion today is informed by what Ghanaians want. It's informed by where Ghanaians want to see our country. And that's what, I suppose, is informing the MPP's conversation. Jimmy, yes. I hope I'll have adequate time as you've given him to well, react well, to that. No, I, I insist on, no, 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 I insist on that too. We'll have adequate time to, to react to some of the things that he said. Mm -hmm. What can be more vicious and, and unconscionable, okay, than when you do not have even a shred of documentation that has ever named a former president of this country as a suspect? You understand? Challenge him, as he's sitting here, to produce a single document, be it a chart sheet, you understand, be it court proceedings, that has named President Mahama as a suspect, a convict, or somebody who has been mentioned as a person of interest in any ongoing investigation, in any jurisdiction, in any part of the world. I'm challenging him now, as he's sitting here be it the US, be it the UK, be it wherever. He should name one country and produce one statement. You understand? Because when you sit here and you call a former president of this country. I don't think I said that. You what do you say? Did, did I say anything about You have yeah. talked about the Airbus scandal. Uh, did I mention You Mahama? have mentioned your party. Your party <laughs> and yourself. Yes, 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 you yes. have, you have, why are you swear, why are you dodging it? You oh. have said that you did a press conference yesterday. You are you talk, talking about the MPP's press conference? Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. and, and he referred to it. And he was there and he was categorically saying that when it comes to the issue of corruption, <laughs> we are running away from the Airbus scandal. We are saying that President Mahama, you understand, is a suspect. Your party, what is more unconscionable about that? So if you want to describe our presidential candidate as a suspect in an international, you know, um, uh, a bribery scandal, mm -hmm. when you know that there's not been a single shred of evidence, not even one, he's not been named as a suspect, he's not been named as uh, a person of interest, he's not been charged, yet you have the air entry and the guts to actually name him as the, 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 the so-called suspect in such a scandal. And you have a video of the sitting president, you understand, receiving money, you understand. And you want us to keep quiet and not discuss it, not talk about it. How is that possible? How is that possible? What is more unconscionable? You know. Let me, let me, I have been a lawyer on record that has actually dealt with cases of Ghanaian citizens who were videoed, judges, three judges who were videoed as having been seen with receiving envelopes. The president signed their dismissal letters based on that evidence. Based on that evidence. So if you sit there and tell me that, why shouldn't we judge him by the same method and by the same measure? If we were in a country that took corruption seriously, this particular incident of having a president being seen being given an envelope mm -hmm. would have called for investigations by parliament. At the minimum, we would have had a public inquiry to find out why that situation happened. And what yet, was, Asepa has reported to Shrag. Well, to Shrag, yes. Uh, but so Shrag beyond, that, go into rate. beyond that, if we mm -hmm. were a serious democracy, mm -hmm. and to accuse the NBC, which NBC person videoed him? This was supposed to be an MPP parliamentary candidate. This year, who videoed the president having received that particular envelope? So how does the NDC come into this matter? Was it the NDC that procured the video, or was it the NDC that paid for the video? Who actually did the video? Was it not a former MPP parliamentary candidate? Can you deny that that man was not a MPP parliamentary I, I, candidate? I don't know you wouldn't know to. <laughs> you would not know. You would not know. You would not know. You see, let's call a spade a spade. Nobody is interested in, in accusing someone personally of, or let alone, why would I want to reduce my president to international ridicule by accusing him of something? But when the video is there and the man is seen receiving the thing, he received it like that with both hands. You can decide to threaten all the media houses not to show the video because of social media. I'm sure even 90% of this country has seen it. You can threaten every media house not to show it. For a, a party that believes in social democracy, you have a deputy minister, a minister of state, threatening a media house. That Who if threatened the media Mr. House? Mr. Farhamid, he said they will take 
I don't F them all. Is that I don't a threat? Team. Of course, it's a threat. What do you mean? If you, why wouldn't you hold station so that we do? We don't Why? own the video. Of we course, but it's a public, a public document. We haven't seen it. It is a public document. If it's investigations into the Yes. Mm -hmm. They have come if out. If we have done that, they have come we can out show to the video. We are in a democracy. Uh -huh. If somebody defames you, you go to court. If someone publishes something against you that you find defamatory, you go to court. You cannot tell me that someone has made an allegation against the sitting president of this country of having collected a bribe. There's a video recording to that effect. It has been shown in the public. And you tell me that it is not newsworthy. But someone who makes an allegation, baseless allegation that ex-president Mahama is a suspect in a so-called Bible scandal, that one is newsworthy. So you can allow the person to say it, and yet when we have video evidence, Ghanaians don't deserve no. to see it. I thank God for social media. At least... Ghanaians will be the judge of who or what is telling the truth. Yeah, you don't you understand? We don't need to debate this. I don't even think this is a topic for debate. No. The man was seen receiving but, but the you, thing. You, let the Ghanaian let the Ghanaian public let me finish my point. I need to let, 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 let me finish. You, you okay. get the opportunity to talk. Let the okay. Ghanaian public be the true judges of whether or not they believe that the president took a bribe. You understand? Because whatever the stories are, mm -hmm. whatever the issues are, it calls for an independent probe into whatever brought about that particular video. You understand? So you think government should commission a probe into it? Of course. Okay. This calls for a probe. And now let me deal with these issues of 2016. In 2016, okay, we made a mistake. Obviously, I've always said that the NBC made a huge mistake by under underestimating the effect of social media. So it gave the MPP in opposition the opportunity to paint the presidential candidates of the NDC in whatever colors they wanted. He was corrupt, he was incompetent. But this is the so-called incompetent president, okay, who in his time built enough hospitals, okay, to accommodate the ministers of the MPP who were fell ill during the course. That's, that's not true. So where were the MPP that's, ministers that's, that's, in? That's, that's where, where, oh, please. Seriously, that's not they true. They are in power, have not even built one hospital. He should name one hospital that they have built in their time. One. One secondary school that they have finished in their time. One. I'm challenging him. One hospital. Oh. Name one hospital that you have built. Name one school. You just need to read. That's all you need to do. We don't have to Name read. it. Just read. I'm putting it to you. Name it. Name yes, one hospital that you have completed in your four years of office. This program into you come into you program. come into you come into office with all manner of promises that we are going to turn this country upside down and make it one of the best in well, Accra. We're going to be one of the cleanest cities in in in, 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 in Africa. We are we are we are in filth and we are being eaten up by filth. You talk about an economy that was run down. Yet yeah, this is an economy that has left behind a power, a, a, a built power capacity for you to inherit. <laughs> what power capacity have you added since you came into office? No, I see. You understand? So sometimes when you sit down <laughs> okay. and you, 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 you listen to them, <laughs> and they talk about uh, Ghana in 2016, as if Ghana in 2016 was, was a hopeless economy, was a dead economy, oh, was an economy that was run down. Yeah. Today, your budget deficit, you've borrowed three times what every other government has borrowed. What do you have to show for it? Not even a secondary school, not even okay. a hospital. Look. It is pathetic. You know, my brother. And I don't even know why he's even going to give me an opportunity to react. What's he reacting to? <laughs> he's not even to that I have to react to him again. the first time I've seen him on a program, so I'm shocked. You know why? You and I have you and I have been on a program. No, I don't know. Please, you know that. He's 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 allowing his emotions to have the best. My emotions. Oh. Just let your blood pressure come down. My blood pressure is the fine. The issue we're talking about is this, okay? The video in question mm -hmm. is a false, doctored video, clear and simple, okay? The owners involved, they are engaged in the process to do the legal thing. Fair enough. That is not even a case for me to live on. Okay. Wh which owners are you talking those about? Those who are fronting it, or those individuals who are in it, okay. who felt defamed, are going to go through the processes to okay. remedy okay. whatever damage they feel they've been done to them. So that is mm. on its own. But you see, the Airbus issue, 
I didn't sit here and mention the former president's name. But now that he said it, we can do the analysis. He's a lawyer. I'm not a lawyer. But the documents that came made some mentions in it. And proceeding from that document, there's an individual named as government official one. If it is not former President John Damani Mahama, it's a government official of the NDC, under the NDC. Who is he? Who is he? If they are so open and honest, then they should tell us who they thought. Now the question is that some airplanes were bought. Is that not the case? Mm. Somebody led the negotiations for that. Somebody led the transaction from our government. Mm -hmm. And the ruling that came says a government official won an elected official and an intermediary who has been identified as a brother, Adam Samuel Mahama, in the document. So then what is this that he's telling me? I don't know. If it is former President John Damani Mahama, and by the way, Mr. Martin Abidu says is John Damani Mahama. If they dispute that, they were in government, and the government official one being talked about was in their government, so they should be able to tell us. So please, you don't sit with me a lawyer and you do these kinds of uh, politics. I didn't come here to engage you. I came here to engage Ghanaians so we can have a conversation. What, about what, what, what has my profession as a lawyer got to do with this? See? What has my profession see, as a lawyer got to do with my this? My commitment as a Ghanaian, hmm? I left the United States to come back to Ghana what? with the understanding that we must build our country and all of us here have a duty to contribute to doing that. I support the New Patriotic Party, not because it is a holy party, but it's a party that has a mindset that I think in this time and age has what it takes, the discipline, the worldview to move our story forward. I support it on that basis. So I want to have a conversation with you. To tell me that in 2009, 2000, 2009, when your government came into office, with all the inheritance you had, with the condition of the economy you inherited, to 2016, what you did with that, let's have a constructive conversation about it and see the outcome for this country. And then let's do same from 2017, when Anando Danko and the MPP came into office, till now, what we're able to do. That's a conversation. This emotional jumping up and down, not what interested he says, in that. He says it's not being emotional. Well, well, yes. I think we should just... Well, I, just I, just I, I think we should just... I, 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 I should cool speak. down on well, that. So, yeah, yeah. so you understand. Yeah. I want us to have that rational conversation. Beyond that, there's no need to engage in these things, right? The point we're making is this that the MPP, given the circumstances, mm -hmm. mm, have been able to manage the affairs of this country much better. We can have that conversation the rest of the program. And then on that basis, ask that Ghanaians going to the polls tomorrow. Mm -hmm. What should be the consideration? And in looking in this generation, I heard one my way, people are talking about our development having been, you know, uh, lacking about some generations behind mm. and needing to, you know, spare that in our, in our time. And then the conversation is that you can promise anything. Talk is cheap. You can promise anything, but we want to marry what you are saying today with your history and your track record to see, do you have what it takes to be able to do something you call a push? Right? You have what it takes. You don't. Give him the record. And that's what we want to have a conversation about. So I am saying that under the circumstances we came into government mm -hmm. and all the promises we made, there is one thing in my mind that I'm clear, that the efforts being applied or have been applied by this government were aimed at honestly delivering on the promises we gave. And if you see today, there are things in Ghana today that were not there when the NDC was in government. Like what? There's a free SHS today mm -hmm. that was not there when they were in government. There are factories in this country today that are there that were not there when they were in government. Okay? The fiscal regime of our country, there are limitations and policies brought to bear that are there today that were not there when they were in government. The NHIS situation, the debt and the imminent collapse of it, okay, was going was was uh, was, uh, was there under the NDC has been improved today. The debt position of it, okay, is not the same today. So we're saying that you have a government that is committed 
to doing it best. Now, let's assess what is it we have done. But you see, the effort to try and engineer a conversation on corruption, when in fact, there is no basis for it, that for me is where I have a, a concern with the NDC. What would you but say to those who think that you, I mean the MPP and the NDC, are the same when it comes to corruption? There isn't much of a the difference. The NDC and the MPP cannot be the same. It's not the same, will not be the same. Well, if you're talking about same in terms of, of okay. us being political parties, yes, we're all political parties. But in terms of value and practice, in terms of belief and commitment to what must be done, the MPP, we're not the same. Okay. Can I, See, can I no, can let, me, let, me, let me read some messages oh, from, 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 from uh, 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 Mahmoud. Okay, you wrap yeah. up. So the Mooney, I'll give you an opportunity. Yes. The so point I'm saying is that the MPP and the NDC cannot yeah. be the same. On every front, on corruption, we're not the same. Mm -hmm. Because if you look at the history, right, in this country, there's one political party whose operatives have been convicted on acts of corruption and jailed. Right? Okay. That's historical evidence. Mm -hmm. When you look on the MPP side, we sat, we sat here in this country from 2000 and, uh, 2008, uh, actually even through uh, President Kufour's period in mm -hmm. office, all right, 2001 all the way to 2008, the NDC was yelling, corruption, corruption, corruption. They had power in 2009. How many of the MPP officials and operatives were they able to jail on the basis of what they claimed in opposition, that the MPP was corrupt? So there's no empirical basis to say so. Now, of course, you can make uh, suppositions and think that this is that, this is that. But the point of it is that to the extent that you don't have any verifiable evidence, everything you claim remains perception. And that's a fact. But I can speak today to a fact that NDC operatives have been convicted and it's on record on corruption. So that's a fact. So we cannot be the same. The, the, the argument has also been that for the MPP, when people, the names of people come up in supposed corrupt deals, uh, they end up being cleared. And so investigations are not thorough. And that is how come you're able to make this comparison as NDC officials who have been prosecuted and jailed for corrupt acts. But that's, again, it's a disingenuous position. Because I just gave you a period in time which is sealed, right? 2001, 2008 is sealed. Right? And 2000, uh, 2000 and, uh, uh, what they call 2001 to 8 sealed. That's a period in which you can say. So 1992, 2000, mm -hmm. also sealed. Mm -hmm. And you take those two periods and look at it, where the two parties were talking corruption here, corruption there. And the evidence is that between those two sealed periods, mm -hmm. you don't have any evidence of an MPP era from individuals, whether or not you think the government is protecting them, it's a different thing, but now you have full control. When you said the person was corrupt, and you have the levels of power to be able to activate that, to prove the corruption, they were not able to do that. So what they are saying now is a modern day situation, isn't it? Mm. Right? That they say, well, the person is being clear. That, I told you, remains perception. Because the, the claims that they are saying Every time they come, they've been subjected to investigation and found to be not as claimed. And so if the, the thing appears to be corruption to you and has been investigated and it's not corruption, do you want it to be corruption necessarily so to satisfy you or you want it to be the truth? If it's not the truth and the person is not uh, persecuted, then you, you say that, oh, it's been cleared. No. The thing is, if it's factual, yeah, it will be yeah, attacked. Hold on, hold on, Doc, if it's factual, mm -hmm. it will be proven. Yeah, but if it's not factual, mm. it cannot be proven just because you want it to be proven for you. Okay. Um, some of the messages our viewers and listeners have been sending to us. Uh, now, the fact that the fact is that the Okufuadro is government is not better than Mahama in terms of fighting corruption. I'm surprised Richard is speaking like that. Okay, that's from Christian in Sapeman. Um, good morning. I agree with Martin Pebu. The electoral college system is outmoded and fought with corruption, vote buying. And that's from Kofi Inada. I'm in UK. I'm an outsider looking in. My question is why, is why are NDC officials not concerned about Ghana being at the center 
of the Airbus deal. You can keep yours coming on any of our test lines. Uh, this one on your screen, also on social media. The hashtag is the big issue. Uh, Dr. Mensah, you want yeah, to come in yeah, yeah, before I get I to you? To, the point I wanted to make is that, uh, Richard, uh, your submission, as, as an independent person sitting there and then looking at it, uh, we, we saw the president report the Nyante G2 police. All right, you remember, uh, during the COVID period, mm. when the report came. Now, as, as a citizen, if you report to the police, all right, you expect that the police will act on that. Now, since then, we haven't actually seen a report from the police, whether the investigation had been done and what the conclusions were. Was, th was that, you know, something that was legitimate at all? Mm. We haven't actually heard that. So, as for me, for example, if the president himself has taken the initiative to report to police that someone had used his name fraudulently, you would expect that there was a report. There's no report on that. So what do you think that ordinary Ghanaians would actually feel in terms of discussing or, you know, suggesting that the NPP is as equally corrupt, you know? So I think that these are some of the things that actually leaves lingering in a concern in the minds of the people that the president stood in this country on a very strong anti-corruption, you know, a, a policy platform to the extent that he talked about, you know, using a mass, you know, theory, for example. But we haven't actually seen that. How would you actually you know, address that issue? For me, if I'm talking about, and as, as I said, you're talking about the brands, the candidate represents something. Mm -hmm. Leonardo, for example, had been one of those candidates that had actually an inherent brand. You could even talk about Kufo being you know, managed or you know, uh, maybe Atamil being managed. Mm -hmm. for, for Leonardo, there was an inherent brand you know, from 1992, growing up. You know the advocacy he does. You know the anti-corruption you know, uh, mm -hmm. kind of message. It seems like that, that platform had been left completely. Mm -hmm. So how would you actually defend that particular positioning? I think it's, it's one of the mm -hmm. kind of things that you'd want to look yeah. at. Oh, sorry, I'll, I'll talk about it if, if I get okay. a chance. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, me? You see, we have something in law we call prima facie evidence. When you are confronted with something, you understand, then the burden is shifted, you understand, from the one who is accusing you to you to give a logical explanation as to why we should believe or not believe you. Now, when you have a video, okay, that shows that the president of this country has been given something, you understand, there is the need for the man himself who stands accused to come out. President Akufuado is a lawyer of 15 years standing at the bar. I don't even qualify to lace his legal shoes, let alone my good friend here to speak for him. We have watched, we've had the privilege of watching him in court. You understand? This is not somebody who fumbles, or this is not somebody who cannot speak for himself. The fact that he's president does not mean that he cannot address the issue. He stands accused of such a serious offense and a violation of his, of his oath of office, if indeed the allegation is true. How then does it become the responsibility of those who did not manufacture the video? And I'm putting it on record, he hasn't disputed it. The video was made by a parliamentary candidate of their own party. He hasn't disputed it. He says he's not aware. He's not aware doesn't mean That's that he's disputing he it. Look, uh -huh. that, that, that so, video, okay, <laughs> there are two versions of the video, okay? You've seen that. We've shown it. The party will put it up. That's why I don't want to legitimize this conversation. The original video was taken in 2016, okay? And if you listen to the video, the dressing and everything of the people haven't changed. But except they have introduced in the doctored version, his excellency and before that excellency came the person who is speaking called him nana okay so the point is that that's why i keep saying that this whole thing is a shameful desperate act 
either the NDC is pushing it or they're enabling whoever is pushing exactly. it to push it. Is, is, the, the problem is so not even your turn. So, I, so, I, no, I, no, I, it's I, important. It wasn't your turn. So, so the point, point, the point is, is that to speak. Hold on, hold he on. just butted no, into my point. Hold on. He'll end it. He'll end it shortly so that you make your point. Nobody has time. We're just trying to inform people, right? The point I am making is that that video was a campaign donation Okay, in 2016, and when you see the original video, says we brought this money in addition to t shirts. And in the original video, the guy went to go bring sample of the t shirt, and the t shirt was captured in the video, and you can see it in Isn't that. It? So, we're saying, and that's why the stations who've shown it have gone to retract. But the NDC, of course, are saying that we didn't push it, that person did it, so they are hiding behind and trying to advance what they know is false. I'm not saying that that, for me, is not a proof of corruption, one that you are saying President Akufuado should come and speak to. Okay, that, 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 but the point is, what you have heard people talk about, people talk it, about is, yeah. for instance, the intent, yeah. if it was a donation, yes. as you say, what, what was the intent? Was that person who gave that amount seeking to recoup something, should uh, the candidates win that particular election? Well, that, that's a motive we can impute. But ge generally speaking, <laughs> when people make campaign donations, they, are, they must be members of the party, they must be people who believe in the party's cause, and so therefore they do that for whatever reason they do it. They do support campaign uh, for, for, for presidential elections. <laughs> now, <laughs> certainly, <laughs> the NDC gets campaign donations. So that is not is a thing for discussion. Okay. But you, you the know. point we're making is that to take a campaign donation and position it in the context of a presidency, Okay, that's unconscionable. I can do that and say that you are sitting on this show, take you out of this space and put you in a, a different scope with a different conversation that does not represent the brand city, right? And that is an indictment that you should not be put in that situation and that's what the NDC has done. And the question finally, before you go to him is that, if that individual, okay, had this video, maybe from 2017 or to whatever time he had it, and he thinks it's corrupt video. Why did he keep it till two days to election to release it? Is it for you to? No, 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 please. The motive is clear that it's a political calculation. You've made that point already. This is not fair. Let's listen to Franklin. Hold on. Let's listen to Franklin. Because when you speak, you would want to come in. How is that possible? So you hold it on the table. Hold on. The other guests respect the fact that that is part of our training. Yeah. It's my colleague is speaking, I don't speak. Then he gets to bat in, and at the end of the Me. day, he says that, oh, because he batted in, it is allowed, so I should not speak. How is that possible? Relax. You get out of the talk. Frankly, no, no, please point. speak. Frankly, yeah. please speak. You must mm -hmm. think I have so much power. Please. I'm not hold saying on, anything. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> it's okay. I, 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 think, I think the issues about the video bill um, tell one story uh, about campaign financing, and I think it's something we need to take seriously as a country. I've, I've never believed that the state should fund political parties. Otherwise, all manner of uh, creatures uh, could be established as, as political parties. Uh, we, we now have a situation like we had in Mali. Uh, certainly, the way we donate to our cost to campaigns, our political campaigns, is something that must be... I mean, the question I asked myself when I saw the video, what both the so-called fake and the real, is that there was a giving. And there was a take. Question is, what was the intention of the person giving uh, to record it? What, what, what was the basis for doing so? Was it just to show that, well, he, he donated to a party in expectation of something and that he used that as evidence? I mean, that was a bit, uh, the intentions were pre precautions. And I think that the, um, I don't think we should we should make it look as if it is not real. I mean, I, I'm struggling to uh, understand my good friend Richard on this one. Black and white. Um, and the thing though is that I think when Richard seems to be suggesting that no, no, yes, mm. the mm. campaign that it was a campaign finance uh, arrangement. Mm. Uh, let let, let him make his alien to our, which are not alien to our our our, our political streets. Just mm. that um, the way it was done and the person who videoed it, and what was the interest of the person to put it out in the public. And mm. you are right, two days to the election, 
maybe that was the entire motive for, for, the, for the video you know, the, of, of the giving. So, um, yet again, another story for our political campaign mm. financing arena. Uh, uh, Franklin, yeah. you, you said in the video, of course, there was a giving and a taking. But the MPP is saying it was recorded in 2016. Okay. If that's the case, should it matter at all? Well, whether 2016 or 2017, the fact of the matter is that as a leading candidate, whether in opposition, if I was even more mechia, if it was 2016, mm. then it would have meant that, uh, well, the party did not have structures where people receive uh, donations. I'm sure there are, I mean, if you read this guy's book, like a Kennedy's book, sometimes some of these controversies came up again as to who receives campaign uh, finance, uh, I mean, donations and what have you. Uh, I can understand that if you want to go to an elder, yes, yeah, sometimes you need to show appreciation. Um, just that the manner in which it was done and the intentions behind it. I'm sure many people have gone to give an Adu or John Mahama uh, present here and there. But mm. Nobody decided to take the video of it. Um, but the substantive answer to your question is that it, it really doesn't matter uh, if it was 2016 or 2015. I mean, 2016 or 2017. The, the, the parties involved in the video is also another reason why we should worry because uh, some suggestions have been made that one of the wives of, the, of, of, of someone that the MVP had wanted to be handed out of office was seen in the video. Um, then you start raising questions about motive, what are the intentions, and then and what was also the reason why this was picked. Look, Unfortunately, corruption is not one of the issues in this election. <laughs> uh, otherwise, if it were, okay. it were, I'm sure, I'm sure we would, have, would, have, would, have, would, have, would not be hearing the last of it. Mm, no, me, matter, go no ahead. Who or what tries to whitewash this issue? Mm -hmm. There were certain individuals in that room who are the principal witnesses, okay, to whatever went on. Anybody else? Whatever you say is hearsay. Somebody reported it to you, or you are making a deduction. We have independent institutions. Parliament is there. The president can set up an independent commission. The problem. Clear your name. Mm. Do you see corruption uh, and with this In the MPP, within the last four days, out in, have in, held press Monday. conferences after press conferences after press conferences, mm -hmm. seeking to address this issue. Mm -hmm. I don't need to tell you that it's an issue. Okay. If they have decided that, oh, we have four days to an election. This is a useless video. Why do they keep responding to it day after day after day? It is because it is making a point. You understand? If it was not making a point, they will not respond to it. Now let me quickly deal with this perception about he goes on to say, I, I still, my challenge is still there. He should name one secondary school. I don't want to talk much. One secondary school that the MPP has put up, okay, between 2017 and 2020. It's the very simple question. Number two, one hospital, one, that they have put up between 2017 and 2020. One generation plant, you understand? Not the, uh, uh, what do you call it, the one that powers the three-bedroom house, the one that they went to uh, uh, do at Kokoi. I'm talking about either a, 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 a hydro dam, or oh, let me finish, either a hydro dam, or, oh, let me finish. Let me finish. I need to read this. Yes, you have to read, you know. No. Why do you want to give us one no. more? You're the one who read. I'll read pages to go and read. Okay, it's so okay. terrible that you're okay, asking so this question. One uh, airport. Uh -huh. I'm asking for one airport. Uh -huh. One. One airport that they have actually oh, put down. No, you see, this okay. is a party. This is a party that just likes to, to blast that. You understand? <laughs> All they do is to talk. You see, they've been completely exposed. This 2016 image that they were the they were the bizarre, nobody even takes them seriously anymore. These were the people that in 2016 said that when they came into power, they were going to turn Ghana into 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 uh, Dubai, make this place look like Dima was going to have uh, uh, apartments. They have been exposed as persons who cannot even manage. Manage anything. Let, let, let me hear borrowing from after borrowing now after borrowing. After borrowing. <laughs> what do they have to show for it? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> That's okay. finally on the corruption. Absolutely nothing. We'll move yeah, on. Yeah. So what oh, no, no, no. I say is, I know naturally as a, a lawyer who goes to court every day, you see that 
I would hold very dear to my heart issues of due process. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So to the extent that for me, somebody has reported the matter to Shiraj, mm. I want to reserve judgment. Uh, yes, I know. Beyond, in the court of public opinion, we've all seen it. We've made our individual and private judgments. But it's not in my place to come on air and begin to comment on the video anymore. One day, one day, Shraj will be done, mm -hmm. and then we'll have the space to be able to uh, analyze their decision. All right. Uh, you are still watching The Big Issue on City TV. We are live on 97.3 City FM as well. We are taking a breather here. We'll be back to continue our conversation. Don't go away. In every society, there are people who look up to others to get by. In this election, you are the one these people look up to, to keep their lives together. Don't look away. Let your vote protect their daily bread their livelihood and their future. Ghana goes to the polls on December 7th and City TV gets to work. From 6 a.m. on December 7th, bringing you all the action and reports with our correspondents covering all 275 constituencies. Be assured of exhaustive and definitive coverage of Ghana's 2020 presidential and parliamentary elections. Our team of seasoned journalists will dissect the issues and give minute-by-minute -minute account of the election. Bernard Avler, Vivian Kai Loko, Kojo Akoto Boateng, Godfred Akoto Boafu, Nathan Kwao, Frema Edunyame, Abena Nyameche Ampedu, Salom Adonu, Umaru Sanda Amadu, Zoe Abu Beidu, Duke Mensa Opoku, Nana Tufo, The Election Bureau, Ghana's Election, Covered. Coverage starts at 6 a.m. on December 7th on City TV and 97.3 City FM. Vote Hassan Ayariga. Vote number 7 on the 7th of December. Vote APC and its parliamentary candidates. Vote Ayariga for transformation and inclusive governance, a data-driven economy, jobs and development. Vote for youth empowerment. Vote Hassan Ayariga. You're welcome back to the big issue on City FM and City TV. My name is Abna Nyamicha <laughs> I'm here with Nifa Husamwajo of the NDC. Franklin Kujo is on Zoom with us. Dr. Kobi Mensa. Uh, Richard Ahiagba, Executive Director of Damkwa Institute and Martin Pribu, Private Legal Practitioner. Uh, before we went for the break, we were talking about the issues of corruption and whether it has a place at all in the polls on Monday. On Tuesday, the Electoral Commission organized a special voting exercise and uh, ahead of uh, Monday's event, that is the national vote in the election itself. But yesterday, too, there was the peace pact, which was signed by uh, the two main candidates, Nane Kufado and John Mahama. So let's take a look at a report from that peace uh, signing uh, event, and then we'll continue. Ahead of the 2020 general elections on Monday, December 7, the National Peace Council coordinated the signing of the third peace pact between the two main political parties, NPP and the NDC. This was witnessed by high-profile personalities, including the National Chief Imam, the Chief Justice, United Nations officials, President of the National House of Chiefs, and other members of the diplomatic community. 
the parties committed to ensuring peace during the elections on Monday. Just as it was in 2016, we want this victory to be sweet and incontestable. I've said that we believe in elections, and I'm happy to give my word that we shall accept the verdict of the people of Ghana. Above all, I pledge that the, peace, the peace, unity, and safety of Ghana will be our primary consideration. The flag bearer of the NDC, John Mahama, in expressing doubt about the commitment of the incumbent government to oversee a peaceful electoral process, charged the security agencies to be up to the task on election day. But ladies and gentlemen, we are optimistic. In the face of similar doubts in the past, Ghanaians have risen to the occasion and delivered a peaceful, successful election. It is my prayer that despite our deepest fears, we shall be proved wrong, and Ghana will once again be proven to be the beacon of democracy. The Electoral Commission assured that the results of the 2020 polls would be a true reflection of the will of the people. I assure you that the results will be a true reflection of the will of the people as documented on the results collation sheets, namely the pink sheets. Former President of Liberia, Ellen Johnson Sirleaf, urged both parties to maintain the peace and stability Ghana enjoys. Ghana stands as a model that we all look to for an example. All right, uh, so that's the events that happened yesterday. Uh, the peace pact, this was the third one uh, in a row. Doc, earlier you, you made yeah. uh, a comment uh, to the fact that the, this ceremony is I think in that, uh, anticipation of... Yeah, uh, uh, earlier on we were even looking at uh, how elections and investment, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm sure my colleagues in finance will tell you, you know, some of these things, although they are very good uh, mm -hmm. because somehow it's kept us, but my worry is that 28 years of practicing these and we are signing Peace Pact, it's something that when you even check the definition, it actually tells you that it is, you know, a symbol for mm -hmm. warring parties, you know. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, of course. I mean, what does peace treaty mean? You know, if you check the definition of peace treaty. <laughs> We've adopted it anyway. We are not worrying, but the grassroots yeah, need so a I'm symbol. Speak, I'm speaking <laughs> about it, political uh, yeah. communication implications. Yeah. Now, mm -hmm. What does that sound, mm -hmm. you know? And, and so, to me, uh, it means that you're going to cast a vote in anticipation of chaos. But you should be able to cast a vote in anticipation of normalcy, because otherwise we wouldn't have peace pact signed. Now, isn't so this one of the paths to normalcy for the mm. ordinary person to see that no, I, yeah, I agree. behind all those heated arguments, we I are agree. also and that is why it, it, That's why it tells mm -hmm. you that we haven't been tolerant, because it has to be a natural mm. process, all right? It has to be a natural, natural process that you go and vote, and then you're mm. anticipating that you know, uh, results will be mm. announced and everybody, mm. you know, is happy. Mm. But why is it that, you know, since the 2012, 12, mm -hmm. we've been signing peace pact? It tells mm. you that the atmosphere is too charged. It tells you that we haven't been tolerant enough. In fact, the tolerance that we talked about mm. is artificial. Because if it was natural, uh, mm. uh, uh, what you call process, Nobody goes, I mean, have you ever heard America goes to elections and they sign peace pact? <laughs> of course not. <laughs> but, I mean, have you ever ours heard? is a developing. Uh -huh. <laughs> no, but that's the no. point. I, we keep saying that yeah. we're developing. We're de mm -hmm. Where will we grow? That's the point. <laughs> 28 years. <laughs> 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 Even America is still developing. Exactly. Yeah. So <laughs> my point is that it, it has to be a worry that uh -huh. we need to identify mm. the fundamental or the underpinnings to this mm. and address them. So why the tension in the system? We have to identify them and say that the tension in the system, because one, winner takes all, yeah, that because is the main two, thing. people spend too much money, yes. because three. So mm -hmm. once we identify the key issues mm -hmm. that leads to this, mm -hmm. how do we address them? Mm. Do you know? Okay. Are we going to sign peace pact for how long? No, but you see, no, it's all about the signing of the peace pact as in a war situation. Mm -hmm. and no, I agree. It's, it's I agree. about the symbolic symbolism, yeah. uh, symbolism yeah. and yeah. also the the commitment mm -hmm. by the parties that we will not use extrajudicial processes to to 
to solve yeah. our problem. I understand so all that. It's, it's, it's within the context of the fact that whatever our differences are as a country, mm. we are committing ourselves and recommitting ourselves mm. to the adherence of basic tenants of rule of law. That you and I are going for a contest. Mm. As leaders, and mm -hmm. luckily one is president, one is a former president. Yeah. They know the implications of mm -hmm. certain actions mm -hmm. or inactions. Look, mm -hmm. sometimes we play with, or we take, we, I think Ghanaians actually sometimes take our democracy for granted. Mm -hmm. okay. And so we don't actually see the consequences of mm -hmm. A little spark, mm -hmm. you understand. Some mm -hmm. of it may be symbolic, but yes. it is it is important. Now, yeah, look, I, I understand that. If if anyone says uh, if, if anyone makes an unguarded statement mm -hmm. post election, for example, mm -hmm. whilst waiting for results, mm -hmm. you understand. Anything at all can happen. Now, One small incident mm -hmm. here can mm -hmm. so it is it is it is refreshing. Mm -hmm. Two days before now, the major election, that okay. yeah. after all the the heat that mm -hmm. comes with. Yeah. Um, an okay, electoral you know, process. Yeah. We all come to the conclusion that when the elections are over yes. and the results are declared, the election is over. No. We need to move on as no, a country. I, I, I understand yeah. that. I understand mm -hmm. that. But when you look at the democratic processes, mm -hmm. all right, Peace Pact is not part of it. I mean, when look at the electoral system, mm -hmm. you know, processes, mm -hmm. you. One, you register, I mean, you mm -hmm. form parties, mm -hmm. you campaign, mm -hmm. you register, you mm -hmm. go and vote. Mm -hmm. You declare, you know, uh, what you call results. Mm -hmm. It's an anomaly to have a peace pact. That's the point I'm making. So what I'm saying is that we have to start addressing things that actually bring the tension. Okay. Yeah. You okay. Know, so that we can at some point eliminate peace pact. Because right. otherwise we're going to... Oh, that, one, that much <laughs> I yeah. agree. That's because the I'm, making. I'm, I'm not like, saying that the peace yeah. pact is not... Okay. Yes, it is. Yeah, for the deeper meaning, I agree with Don. Yeah. This issue of the winner takes all. That, come on, the constitution is lopsided. Mm -hmm. You see, we've been talking about this over and over and over. It's just not good. We concentrate too much power in the presidency. There's too much power there. Yeah. We need to, you know, break it down. And especially, I remember the campaign about the DCs. Yeah. So whoever wins the election, look, we are making a passionate plea. Mm. January 2021, go let's go back to that matter. Let's have non-partisan elections at the district level so that the DC will be elected by the people, not on party lines. Mm -hmm. Let that matter be the number one mm -hmm. issue on the agenda of whoever wins the presidential elections, okay? Mm -hmm. So that it will help to dissolve part of the tension. Mm -hmm. Because if uh, at the district level you have an independent mayor, then you see that the people can rally around him. They can help develop at that stage. It will help to reduce the tension. Then we will come to the other ones because when it comes to the ministerial appointments and those ones, <laughs> it will take a while. At least this president did a bit of it. At least by appointing Mr. Amidu to the office of special prosecutor, mm -hmm. though he has resigned on <laughs> other ground. No. It's a good start. <laughs> mm. Yes, uh, you remember okay. Kufuor's time. Dr. Mahama also. Yes, yeah, Ambassador. The uh, President uh, Kufuor's time, he appointed Malamisa. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so let's hope. Mahama, uh, President Mahama, so do you remember the, any person from the other side? That you appointed. Oh, I need to mm. check We've this. just started. We are just 28 years. You see, sometimes we, 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 I think we just want to run too fast. Let's remember, look, this is very key. When the Americans started, sometimes we, we just don't read their history, so we think they've got it rosy. <laughs> you know how the Republican <laughs> Party came? Mm -hmm. They came to fight slavery. That was the purpose for uh, this forming the Republican Party. It wasn't there in 1776. Mm -hmm. They were not happy with the slavery that was going on, so that's how that party came up. So Lincoln came in, he won the elections, mm -hmm. and then, you see, uh, this, uh, Virginia, Carolina, there were about seven states. Mm -hmm. the, the, the Republicans. Yes. Yeah. So they came in and said, no, we want to stop slavery, mm -hmm. okay? We want to stop slavery. That was what led to the Civil War, and over a million people died. Okay. So sometimes when you see the Republican Party, no, no, nobody formed it as a party just to come and challenge for uh, existence sake. No. Mm -hmm. Apart from the Democrats, the Democrats used to be called Democratic Republicans. They mm -hmm. used to use the two names. Mm -hmm. Then as and history they were went, buying and keeping slaves. yes, <laughs> yes. Uh -huh. But eventually they stopped sl slavery in the north, the northern part of America. Mm -hmm. But the South, you see, the Virginia, Carolinas, and the rest, they were continuing. Then 
you know, Lincoln came in 1861, then they had the Civil War and all that. Mm -hmm. So it's important it's for us to, and especially the millions of people who died. Mm -hmm. You see, so let's, if we look at it so far, so good, at least we are not at the brink of war. Yeah. They had the massive Reagan and the rest, okay? They used to have duels, politicians. Mm -hmm. You know this man, uh, the man who helped to form the, uh, uh, this, uh, the Federal Bank of the U.S., the, this, uh, this guy, uh, Alexander Hamil yeah. Hamilton. Mm -hmm. Hamilton was killed in a duel because another of the politicians, uh, I've forgotten his name, challenged him to a duel and killed him. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, if you look, the Federal Reserve Bank, it was Hamilton. He was partly uh, West Indian. He came and married in the U.S. and was very influential. There's a lot of history. If you go into their history, it's not as smooth as we are getting yeah. it. Yeah, what okay. we are doing turns right. into insignificance. <laughs> 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 yeah, please, please. Yeah, so, so it's very good. I think uh, this subject makes my, my senior calm down a little. And I like his, <laughs> oh, I like his contribution <laughs> on, the, on, the, on the, you know, the peace pact and everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because, and, and, and Doc, I, I see your position, but you see, they, we need to do that, or we're doing that for good measure. Yeah. It's not as if um, it's the, the, the focus. Mm -hmm. It is so that consciously we feel we have committed ourselves mm -hmm. to this, so therefore we must conduct ourselves in a special, particular way to make sure that the outcome of the election is as should be. Mm -hmm. So it's just a reminder that we're going into this. It's not really the end of the world, mm -hmm. but we are deciding who leads our country, and hopefully Nanado Danka Kufado is who we decide, mm -hmm. and that it will be peaceful and we'll move. In fact, the recent uh, U.S. Uh, electoral campaign, mm -hmm. they, they, they have had to have the candidate commit to agreeing yeah. to cede power if they if they lose. And, and so. Exactly. So <laughs> so it is, it is just you know. It's also a peace pact. Exactly. <laughs> yes. 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 yes, it has to commit getting to commit. Yes. 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 You know, they started the yes. season before the election. Exactly. Yes. yes. Exactly. So it is it is for good measure, and uh, I think that is good for us. It shows that we are committed. Mm. Uh, both sides are committed to peace and mm. committed to Ghana. Okay. As what we are fighting. And for. Just, just, just to add, just to add to that. You know, the peaceful transfer of power is seen as a fundamental pillar in a democracy. Exactly. That is why a lot of people are criticizing Donald Trump mm -hmm. for undermining that almost a hundred years of mm -hmm. very sustained yeah. peace. Yeah. Even yeah. the issue of a concession speech mm -hmm. for them mm -hmm. is, is cut now. Yes. Yes. And so if you are seen to deviate mm -hmm. from that, you are seen yeah. to be abnormal. Yeah. Okay. And he even is going to probably be the only fourth president ever to not attend mm -hmm. the inauguration <laughs> yeah. of his successor. Uh, he's he's not, he's he's not going. He's he's most likely not going. He might just go out. <laughs> 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 mm -hmm. uh, uh, Frank, we are talking about this peace pact, but one of that I'd like you to comment on the special voting exercise and uh, your observations about the exercise and the EC's preparedness going into Monday. Well, these parts are useful. Um, the only challenge I have with this uh, ceremony, uh, should I say, conduct, is mm -hmm. that we tend to sweep a lot of the things that, uh, and that which essentially are embers that poor conflict uh, under the carpet. Look, before the restriction and before we got there, there were acts of vandalism, right? People were firing them. I think Howard, was it Howard Kumsin or something that fired a shot? Yeah. And all of that. I didn't hear a word from the president. And I shudder to think that if, if, we did, if these persons were not called out and the election day, they do something similar, the opponents will, sit, will not sit back. You understand? So this um, act of vandalism that we witnessed during the registration should have been part of the conversations before we got here. And because we've not addressed them, signing peace pact will be useful. Then we are just sweeping a lot of things under the carpet. I hope that we wouldn't see those scenes that we saw during the registration. Um, that way, the real peace would have been enhanced. Mm. Um, on the issue of the both special vote. I mean, I keep saying that this EC just needs to do what every EC has done. Just organize an election. Uh, so special voting or not, I mean, it's just one of the exercises they would have conducted anyway. Mm. The only reason why they are, we are discussing it right now is because of the chaotic nature 
they themselves work their us all through the process. Uh, there were a lot of things they did which were not need, which were needless anyway. Well, now they say they can deliver the results in 24 hours. Another imposition that is needless. In actual fact, parties will know by by the end of you know, probably after five hours of voting where they they lie in terms of the results. So, look, the EC should just organize an election and leave us to decide who we vote for. And mm. I think they are just part of a small piece of this whole uh, enterprise called Ghana. Really. All right. Um, I'll be hearing from my guests about the elections and the final preparations. Uh, Richard, where will the president's uh, last campaign be? Um, <clears throat> well, so essentially, uh, we're, we're done. Okay. Um, effectively. Uh, so it's all about the elections now. Mm. Um, but um, just as a quick note on mm -hmm. what Franklin said. Mm -hmm. I, I was. I think the peace thing. We all agree. I don't know where he's going to. Where somebody shot a fire, uh, shot a gun, or something, uh, <laughs> because really that's irrelevant. Uh, 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 it's not. It's not irrelevant, Richard. The fact yeah. of the matter is that we have hoodlums in the names of ministers, firing guns and registration processes. There was a process before the VL boot. Point is, it was not addressed. No, it was. Right? It, it was addressed, and the individual said it was in self-defense. In fact, mm -hmm. I, I, I can show. Uh, video. That person should have, that person oh, no. should have been taken No, it's okay. So what minister. I'm saying is that it's irrelevant because we, we have gotten to a point, whatever happened, mm -hmm. you've gotten to a point where you're saying that going forward we want to do this, right? So that's why I say it's irrelevant. Okay, so I, you don't think yeah, yeah, that, that, one it, is. that conversation is necessary. If we haven't done a peace thingy mm -hmm. and then you're saying, oh, because of that, then we need that, then fair enough. I, I, say, I just say, like, I have a video mm, of the NDC mm -hmm. rally mm -hmm. in my home constituency. After a peace, after a health walk, mm -hmm. uh, they came to their final destination and just started shooting up in the air. Mm. Okay, I have the video here. Mm. So, is, is is that why we should be what we should be discussing now? So let's put those things aside, right, and focus on how is it to build this country. The peace pact, like my brother was saying, is a is a critical plank in terms of democracy. The agreement to concede this uh, defeat and say that yes I have contested yes I've lost and yes you have won is a critical thing so committing ourselves to that is key it has mm -hmm. nothing to do with whatever people misconducted themselves to do here or there mm -hmm. right and so let's not focus on that now the ele electoral commission has gone through a process that I think they have not gotten much credit for but I don't think that they should be asking for credit today uh, they hopefully should get credit when the process comes to a close. Uh, from the outset, there's been, there's been skepticism, uh, somewhat justified, somewhat unjustified from the NDC and the rest of the political party, uh, from my own party, seeking to ensure that the EC does what we expect of it to do, that is to adjudicate an electoral process mm. fairly, and make sure that all the laws are complied with and all the processes are fair and everybody feels safe and confident in what we're going to do on Monday. And the verdict, if you look at it this far, uh, you can say that they have done a creditable job. This is not the my EC. assessment, yes. Okay. It's not my assessment. The CDD's poll recently speaks to that. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it goes to say that sometimes you see political parties especially those in opposition, act in ways that create tension when there is none. And all the noise about the EC and the personalities who occupy that office have really been shown uh, empirically not to be uh, what the citizens feel. Mm -hmm. And so that for me is comforting. Uh, my understanding of what they plan to do um, is to ensure that the result uh, is brought in, calculated, certified, and announced mm -hmm. in a record time, 24 mm -hmm. hours. I think it's doable. Mm -hmm. uh, we should we should support them as much as possible to do it. The only way it cannot be done is if, well, barring any obvious uh, system glitch, uh, the only way it cannot be done uh, per the political setting will be if one political party dis 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 decides to um, you know, dock the process mm. and, and, and behave in ways that is obstructive rather than contributory. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm not it's, it's not, it's not saying so that you have accused anybody, but I'm saying that it's, it's a practical, it's a practical problem, for example, 
Just let me give you an example. You see, he likes what he did. No, 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 have conducted themselves in ways that I think that we should all have confidence mm. at this point going into the elections. Um, we on the MPP side, I think that um, preparation and effort has been put in place to ensure that our conduct in the process does mm. not gridlock the okay. system and then be able to uh, uh, sign the things, verify by being vigilant, we're able to know in record time as exactly to be able everything. to certify or sign the pink sheets for them to be forwarded and then okay. the process carries on. Mm. If all of us does that, I mean, I think that uh, we'll get to a point where they can achieve that. Mm. And the, the importance mm. of achieving that is the bringing closure to okay. the issue. So there is no lingering doubts and suspicion out there what is happening because we saw that in 2016. I think that is what is informing uh, this EC's position to want to be expeditious about it in to ensure exactly. Results. So because right. the longer these things take, it breeds some tension and people are anxious. They want mm. to know. They want to know. They want to know. So I think that is a good thing. Mm. Um, and just be careful though, uh, be, I, I know. I know you, you say something about that. So let me just conclude <laughs> so you can. <laughs> so no. so extend it to the okay. So, so I, I, let me, I let me need just to take end. another break yeah. here. Oh, okay. uh, let, me just, to, uh -huh. let me just conclude. In the, the, so the points I'm, mm -hmm. I'm saying is that mm -hmm. let's let's give the EC the benefit of the doubt because everything they have done to this point has been validated to be fair and we don't have any basis not mm. to trust and be confident in what they are going to do on Monday. Okay, Clement in Takwade says uh, the matter of corruption has been hard to deal with by our political leaders. They tend to protect their members on all allegations and yet when it comes to their doors, they tell us, uh, they come to their doors, our doors, they tell us uh, they are not corrupt and that they will use rigorous tactics to eradicate corruption and all sorts of grammar. Uh, NDC and MPP, we are tired of you already and we will decide definitely. Uh, Isa in Boko, I'm disappointed in the MPP. How can you have a video that you did not record and the one who record, you say the one that has been recorded is fake? Okay. Dwayne, uh, you say you are disappointed in the government. Uh, Ofori Boateng, why didn't the NDC do what they are promising today when they were in power? They should give us a break. Gideon in Mankasim, Richard should know that corruption is about perception. That is why we have a corruption perception index, a scientific tool for measuring corruption fights, and it puts the NDC ahead of the MPP. Uh, you say, Queen La Paz, Ghana is not, is doing il voting and elections, you don't think we are practicing democracy. Okay. Um, a final one, Gibson. Uh, we've been hearing other political parties who come to power and say that the other party left us nothing and they've chewed all the meat and is left with the bones. So I'm asking the NDC rep that if we give them the mandate this time, are they not going to say the same thing, which always brings us down as a country in terms of development and continuation? We are taking a breather. We'll be back to continue. Don't go away. Vote Hassan Ayariga. Vote number seven on the 7th of December. Vote APC and its parliamentary candidates. Vote Ayariga for transformation and inclusive governance, a data-driven economy, jobs and development. Vote for youth empowerment. Vote Hassan Ayariga. Election 2020, Ghana makes a choice. Tracking and bringing you reports of the presidential and parliamentary campaigns across the length and breadth of this nation. Analyzing campaign activities and election data with our panelists on the Voters' Diary. The Voters' Diary is the most factual, instructive, and balanced election 2020 analysis program on television. The Voters' Diary, every weekday on City TV from 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. Stay informed on all the relevant issues on election 2020. Tune into the Voters' Diary, it's Ghana's choice.
remember. It was a painful four years. We couldn't have enough time due to the light. We couldn't have enough time to stay. So we wait for daytime to stay. It's time doing something. So now you say you see touch and I say you be said. And I thought you know, say bright it is a normal light. No, it's not affecting your students. Before no, I do so no. Over two fifty the next day. Yeah, do like you do me a supper, not fifteen the grass and so. Yeah, 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 my light, yo, at Nabba, at the chip, begging us, at Chabba, my damn minister call Doctor Cabradonco, a catcher, and say, On the doom is on one to me, I'm so via, or bear is I am far, one to me, I'm so good. Do some before then, India, nay, very bad. Oh yeah, you might cry. She probably cry. If you say me now, it's very bad, so terrible. But this time one idea, so wonderful. Yeah, my cool if ah, yeah. Me 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 printing, t-shirt printing, yeah. And then printing, you know, they they use machines. It's not effective, baby, because you do me like that. You know, you use machine behind when you're printing. Next, so cry me to me now. Mr. Sayeti, my Mr. Juma Begui, because no one to me is a generator. It's a my actual shop room. It's a doom sonny day, a behire, a pebble, good Juma Begui. Mr. I can see your cost on the numbers say, I'm a cost on you Begui. It's a doom sonny day, I did the problem there. Doom sonny mark, young customers know that so quite. Her palace here, shop if you are a good Juma, because one can say, Beno, oh baby, the way Juma no call. Four more for Nana, four more for Nana, four more. Now, what may you if you have a beer out to be a rano? I may catch the winner, so who compare a pine that done with a now goes and now I be a mouth. Why being a stable may catch and a man, you may catch. You're welcome back to the big issue on City FM and City TV. Uh, we have a message from Dr. Nyaho Nyaho Tamaklo on the issue of the peace pacts. He says these peace pacts don't mean anything. All the political parties must respect the basic laws of the electoral system and abide by it. This ritual of parading leaders and priests on TV is not helping anyone. It is hypocrisy at its highest level. All right. So, mm. gentlemen, uh, let's move on. Ni, you wanted yeah. to make a quick point about the electoral commission and the preparedness, among other things. Oh no, I'm what? saying that. Mm -hmm. I'm saying that. Look, so far, mm -hmm. okay, in terms of the distribution of of materials, everybody has been vigilant. Okay. So far, we can say that up to this point, we are fairly on the road to what I would hope would be a successful election. Most does, of the time... Does the NDC still have doubts? No, most of the time, okay, most of the time. Mm -hmm. It is not the actual voting that normally has issues, especially when there's a commitment to start early and to complete. Because sometimes you can there, there could be late starts, for example. We've had elections in this country where because the new system, we introduced new systems, some places we had to go into voting mm -hmm. the next day. Yeah. You understand? So when you are an electoral commissioner, you can have, you can have, uh, uh, you can you can reassure us that if all the so that's why I like when we all studied economics. They say all things being equal. You understand? All things being equal, I hope to be able to uh, announce the results within 24 hours. That is our target. But you see, there is a good reason why past commissioners have had the 72 hour limit. That they would, it is within 72 hours, so that. You will not say that I, I can do it in 24 hours if I have the information. But I'm hoping to do it within 72 hours. I think even 48 hours would have been a realistic, you know, uh, 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 proposition. But when you have so many variables, early start of the, uh, 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 what do you call it? The, the process, the exercise. Yes, you've distributed. Mm. But there's day-to-day distribution issues. People can have uh, 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 returning officers 
can have running stomach, they can have, they can fall sick, they can, they can. No, these are practical things. So sometimes the, in this country, we've never had an election where every single police station has started at seven o'clock. It doesn't happen. Sometimes it, they can even start at 10, 11, 12. Sometimes because of weather conditions, they've had to move it to the next day. Mm. So you can only hope and pray, you understand, that you have all your, in fact, to be able to declare 24 hours, you know what it will take? It means that every single police station has to start exactly at 7. Mm. All police stations must close exactly at 5. No. It also because means that counting <laughs> must be done without any recounts. It also means yeah. that at the end of the day, when you are doing uh, constituency collation, uh, for example, the distances invariably are not that much, so that you are not dealing with situations where the police, you know, do you know the distances between worse. some worse. police yeah, stations and the constituency collation center. So you talk as if Ghana has the best uh, uh, road infrastructure that you could possibly talk about, not to talk about uh, uh, the same, uh, having access to uh, 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 all places at the same time, and so we'll be able to look. We as part practical players in the in the on the on the ground mm -hmm. are telling you that it is an unrealistic. You see, because when you do that, what happens is that you raise a certain expectation, and so if within that's 24 what, hours you are not able to declare the results, that. then people begin to ask yeah. you questions. Why are you not being able to uh, 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 meet the 24? Hours? What you also then do is to put unnecessary pressure on yourself. Mm. And so you That's will be forced to be asking your people to push in mm. uh, 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 results or to, for you to be able to come up with some preliminary uh, statement within 24 hours. Imagine. And you saw what happened in America recently. Where in during the night, Trump felt he had won. Okay? And because right. he had certain uh, uh, right. results mm -hmm. at, at a certain time. And then there were, and, and the realistic thing he was being told was that, look, there were mail in votes mm -hmm. coming. Mm -hmm. And so wait until mm -hmm. everything had been brought in. And so he prepared his uh, supporters' mind mm. for a particular result. So yeah, if, for I example, you have an electoral commission issuing a preliminary statement, and then another party say, look, we are waiting for some results, they are not yet in. Do you understand the chaos uh, that you could but, create? But, but, see, see the, the EC saying that we are just, so we are just sounding a portion no, no, to the EC. We are just sounding a portion to the EC. The point is, it is a caution that let we are all players in this field. We've done these elections. We've run this. You are. This is your first election. No, no. She's also. This is this, this is her first election. She's not run any election before. She has not run any election before. Of the election she has not run any okay. election in any capacity or uh, let's, let's, This let's is her first time. In fact, the uh -huh. three commissioners that are there, apart from the one who is in charge of operations, mm -hmm. this is their first time of running an election. Well, we know, have been but the ones who have been an election. Okay. So we are telling you mm -hmm. that please. Tread cautiously. Okay. So be realistic realize... with your expectations. Mm -hmm. We are praying. Look, we are. What, what do we gain as a party if there's uh, there's chaos at our uh, police stations? The first step we all have to look at and pray is that the election day activities, the stats, that is even really critical. At least they have distributed the materials. Mm. Ahead of time. That's what which I was is, coming to. That good. beyond the twenty-four but you see, hour are still, are still do in, you still have as concerns as we, as about the preparation? There is even problems with some of our our hit, uh, places where they need a boat to cross to one side to go and uh, 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 deliver uh, ballot uh, uh, papers and things. Which areas? Oh, some uh, the OT in the OT region, for example. My information is that the boat that connects uh, one part. They are not too familiar with the geography of that area. Mm. There's a problem with one of the boats. You understand? The practical problems that you could face on D-Day. Let's pray, okay, and cooperate together as NDC, MPP, and all other parties. Let's get our agents and everybody there on time. Let the election day voting go well. Let us also cooperate to get the results moving on time. You understand? If we are all able to do that, then we can all hope, you understand, that we will get the results on time. But you can also put in a process where, as and when you are receiving results, you could be decreasing. One of the ways of de, uh, uh, putting out the attention out there is to be able to, just like they've done with the uh, use of their website and things. Mm. Regular as updates. and when, exactly. You, okay. can, you can empower your regional directors uh, to be given us, uh, at least even for the parliamentary, given out the uh, 
results that they get as and when they get it because you have media all over the place and then you as the returning officer for the presidential reserve the presidential uh, uh, declaration to yourself mm. but once there's there's that transparency and that openness you understand in terms of the results some regular declaration or some results you will bring the attention down okay but you don't Let's see any of these right challenges arising right? everything you just said and concluded mm -hmm. yes validate the position the EC has said that they want to be expeditious, right? Mm -hmm. You want to de-escalate, make sure tensions are manageable. So we have voted five o'clock. The thinking is that two, three hours time, we'll be able to count, count from the police station forward to the constituency coalition center, done. And then they package it from there to regional and from regional to national. And the person who have set up the system, you don't have to be an elect electoral scientist to be able to say that in 24 hours, I want to comp compute my numbers and be able to certify and announce. Okay. That is the spirit is that we want to make sure that the outcome of the election, people don't wait too long. You saw in 2016 what happened, all right? There were press conferences here, declarations here, comfortable lead and the rest of it, because of that. So then they have learned. You see the parties declared the results because of the delays, the, the press conferences. I mean, but there was palpable mm -hmm. tension in the country where we're, we're expecting, everybody's expectant. And then so, then the EC says, having learned, okay, mm -hmm. from history, okay. having learned mm -hmm. from the people mm -hmm. who were mm -hmm. in that office before, mm -hmm. maybe, mm -hmm. just, just one quick second, uh -huh. just because maybe the, the former EC chair left some notes about mm -hmm. how is it they feel that they, they could have done this thing better and all of that. Okay. So he learned from that and said, well, let me commit to 24 hours. If not, mm -hmm. then I'll come back to the country and say, we wanted to do 24 hours, but we need six hours more <laughs> because that part, that part. You give people a sense of structure and expectation. All right. Uh, I'm sure you've observed preparations mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. the special voting exercise, among mm -hmm. other things. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, what are your impressions? Oh, well, so far, so good. And uh, especially because the votes are counted openly, mm, okay, yeah. at the polling stations, no. generally, <laughs> the uh, opportunity for rigging is reduced drastically, of course. But the parties have learned over the last uh, number of elections we've had. They've seen the loopholes, so I'm mm. sure they've all tightened. Uh, the last time there were issues of hacking of the EC's uh, system, system. So I'm sure mm -hmm. now both parties have learned how to, you know, uh, overcome self challenges. And the EC itself, mm -hmm. I expect that it means that they've mounted stronger system, very robust and all that. So, I mean, in the absence of any clear evidence of uh, some lapses, I'm uh, expecting a very good election. Mm. Dr. Mensah. Yeah, I, I have, you know, criticized the EC on a number of you know, occasions, because I thought that the EC had been only one-sided, that is, things to do with the elections, and seeded the campaigning bit, you know? They are regulator, like you will find, you know, a National Insurance Commission regulating that space. Mm -hmm. The EC is a regulator of the political space. If you look at campaigning, for example, mm -hmm. and the COVID thing, mm -hmm. why is it that the political parties are campaigning without, you know, consciously, deliberately getting people to be in mask, etc. Mm -hmm. All right. What about the internet, the digital space? The EC hadn't been competent enough to actually come out with regulations that could actually govern the entire electoral you know, system. So I have had serious questions about their ability to actually regulate the space. They should start doing that. We are becoming very sophisticated in our in a, a, a democracy. Campaigning is part of their job, you know, making sure that political parties stick to rules and regulations and whether they are being innovative and the innovations that are coming out actually are compliant to the rules and regulations of the space. They have ceded that side, you know. So for me, they should start understanding the digital space, you know. Right now, we're saying the campaign actually ends is it today or tomorrow? Today. 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 Mm -hmm. The social right. media will be flooded. Certainly. <laughs> We're going to shift to social, social media. media. What do you say about that? In fact, people started campaigning COVID time. Mm -hmm. Do you know? And that actually gives, you know, uh, uh, advantage to some people. And the advantage to The EC had not been able to come out with rules and regulation to govern, you know, the entire you know, comprehensive space. So I think that they have to start getting in, if they don't have the competence, they should start recruiting people who understand those spaces. Mm. 
and coming out with rules and regulations that could comprehensively you know, look into our system. But they, I, they have failed on that, on that point. Okay. I will appeal in respect of the security mm. on that day. Mm. You see, we are, we are citizens of this country need a security architecture and possibly legislate that security ar architecture on elections. Mm. You see, we've tried. We have this National Election Tax Force headed by the IGP, which has continually been used mm. every year. They activate it normally, I think, a year to the election. Mm. We need to legislate this so that we are clear who and who can be at an election uh, police station. We used to have a situation where the, the, the security at the election police station is supposed to be unarmed normally. Mm -hmm. You have unarmed personnel mm -hmm. at the police station. Yeah. And then there's a backup team, mm -hmm. maybe a few mm -hmm. meters where, where they identify as what they call flashpoints. Mm -hmm. Because of the Ayawaso incident, I'm happy the IGP has come out to clear, clarify the fact that yeah. everyone who will be, who will be deployed mm -hmm. must necessarily have name yeah. tags, mm -hmm. you understand? understand there's even a badge, badge that right. has been assigned mm -hmm. to Uniformed, them. Yeah. And so any other person who comes around is a hoodlum or someone you would, you should treat as a criminal mm -hmm. who has no business being there if he purports to be coming from any security agency and mm -hmm. cannot be identified. Mm -hmm. You understand? If we legislate security, the security architecture into law, it would empower the IGP as chairperson or whoever it is that has been legislated to ensure that there's no interference from what so-called national security or whatever it is. That the actual day election security management is left to the professionals. So that there's no political interference. Because it is important. Hmm. Especially when you have political... For example, we have a situation where Minister of Interior, Minister of Defense are all what? Taking part as active participants in the election. Hmm. If you don't have a situation where there is that decoupling of control from the political actor in that particular situation. So that, for example, if you have the Minister of Defense, the Minister of Interior, being parliamentary candidates, for example, they have no business being in charge of the management of election. Day right. day. Because there will be clear conflict. Mm. You understand? Mm. I would be, how I imagine that I'm competing with the Minister of Interior in a constituency. Mm. And the Minister of Interior has political uh, oversight on the police. Do you, uh, do you think that, if, imagine that he is doing something as a candidate against the laws of this country, any policeman in his right sense will be able to arrest him. Mm -hmm. so, so, so that's, something, Osu, that, that, uh, that's example, something that should be taken up going taken forward up. Yeah. You on, understand? on that, the election that, that security task force. That for me is important. We're what, wrapping what, up, me. What, yeah. what will you be voting? I'll be voting in trouble. Trouble. Yes, I'll be voting okay. in trouble. I want to appeal to Ghanaians that mm -hmm. we are not at war. This is an election that, yes, is crucial because it decides who runs the affairs of the country within the presidency mm -hmm. and who runs the affairs of um, parliament mm -hmm. as well. All I'll just urge Ghanaians is to vote your conscience. Okay. If you believe that you've had a good situation between 2017 and 2018, which is the, the current government. Mm -hmm. If, however, you think that your, your, your condition Mm -hmm. has not been better mm -hmm. from 2016, mm -hmm. give the NDC another chance mm -hmm. to govern this country. Of course, Dr. Mesa, you know where to yeah. vote. It's my, my, my concern is the bad. My concern <laughs> is the bad. State institution is doing campaigning. I mean, I monitor yeah. because I'm, that's my work. Mm -hmm. And I've seen and I've heard state institutions doing campaigning. And I've jokingly told somebody, one day we'll wake up and the police will be doing political campaigning. <laughs> we have to be mindful of that. Okay. We couldn't actually have state institutions playing mm. active party politics you know, within that. That's right. very worrying. Mm. Are you yeah. voting on Monday? Yes, please. Uh, Legon. All right. Yeah, uh, I think they call for us. Mr. Febu, yeah. finally so, from you. <laughs> right. So uh, my final message is that as Ghanaians, please, let's keep the peace mm. above everything else. Yeah. Let's keep the peace. I'm not saying if people run foul of the rules, we shouldn't hold them accountable. What I'm saying is that let's not disrupt the elections because we see that one party is losing mm. or one candidate is losing. Please and please, let's continue to keep the peace. Mm. Yeah. Where will you be voting? Oh. <laughs> <That's>, uh, <laughs> for security reasons. <laughs> Richard. Yes, um, the EC has done a good job, and I will encourage them to make sure they keep the standard high. Mm. 
and uh, be very disciplined and focused, be timely in the distribution and opening of the polling stations um, so that people can go and exercise their franchise mm. uh, freely and fairly, uh, which I think they have committed to. Uh, but to the Ghanaian who is going to vote, I am very clear in my mind that as far as we are concerned, we know we're building a country. And the assessment is clear that in four years, we're comparing the achievement of a government in four years to a government in eight years. We're comparing the achievement of Nanado Dankwa Agufado to John Dramani Mahama, the former president, for eight years of, of his performance. And we are saying that the two on a scale shows that the Akufado era has been more profitable for Ghanaians. And in fact, the contradiction uh, in the NDC position, oftentimes comparing four and eight is obvious because they know they have performed less. But what we want Ghanaians to bear in mind, that there was a reason in 2016 we voted to reject Mahama. It was because he did perform. It was because he demonstrated clear lack of capacity to deliver any thing he promised to Ghanaians. So it's a repetition of 2016. The same person has not changed. He's the same person. His capacity is the same. The individuals he's most likely going to work with are the same. They are the same group of people who failed in 2016, and they are the same group of people who are coming. So we must validate the vote we casted in 2016 to say that we choose hope over the destruction and failure they gave us for eight years and vote Nanado Danko Bufado. Number one for victory on Monday, December 7th. Uh, Franklin, I, I intentionally made you the last to speak because I know you are not voting. But what will you tell the Ghanaian people? He didn't take part in the registration exercise. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Well, um, I encourage everybody to be civil. Um, just go and vote uh, for your preferred candidate. I think you should allow the economic reality of the day to guide you, and then also the futuristic prospects, if there's a word like that, if it, if it is not pathological. But the prospects of hope uh, that the evils of corruption, the things that eat away at your livelihoods, could be overturned by, this, uh, by your vote. Mm. I urge everybody to be civil. Uh, no need to go and cause mayhem. And then uh, just exercise your right as a citizen, really. I wish, and I wish the Electoral Commission well. Um, seriously, I do wish them well. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, finally, uh, let me read uh, the messages. Uh, I'll try and read as much. Register. No, he didn't register. We yes. need to look into that. <laughs> the COVID, no, the COVID scare. We could have avoided it. Yeah, uh, we so he didn't take part. Yeah. 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 I, I didn't take part because, because <laughs> I, I was going to attack him. That's almost irresponsible. <laughs> no, 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 I, I didn't say that. 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 I didn issue in the election because uh, you say the media has failed to talk about it either because of fear or deliberately you are voting against corruption from Paul in Konongo the issue of corruption throughout the polls that have come out score very low percentage on the minds of voters that's an indication Ghanaians are discerning enough to know what uh, constitutes corruption and not the NDC's propaganda. Dr. Rako from Winneba, my advice to the EC is they should also prepare adequately for a runoff of the presidential elections if it, <laughs> it occurs. Uh, neither of these two men want a runoff. <laughs> uh, Rashid Inwa, you're asking why some people are doing everything possible to undermine the EC in its bid to conduct those elections effectively. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm for tuning in to today's edition of The Big Issue here on 97.3 City FM and on City TV. I was here with Nick Papo Samuajo.
member of the NDC's communication team, Franklin Kujo, president of Imani Africa, Dr. Kobi Mensa, political marketing strategist, and uh, Richard Ahiaba, executive director of Dankwa Institute, also Martin Pebu, private legal practitioner and director of Human Rights and Governance Center. Don't forget, this is the Election Bureau, and we've got you covered from 6 a.m. on Monday till when elections are declared, actually, until when uh, the new president is sworn in. My name is Abnanya Mechia Thank you so much for tuning in.